All right, hello everyone. Welcome to the stream for May the 30th. It is Saturday today, and the plan is to, yeah, keep going with the Hyper Metroid. Uh, I've decided that we're, uh, we're going to be done with uh, Streets of Rage 4 for the time being. I did my 1cc run. I've been playing it for over a week pretty consistently at this point. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to move on to other things and yeah the first of those things is going to be hyper metroid that's the sound of my tea being finished there so we will load up oh and uh, hello there salvador welcome to the stream uh we'll switch on over to game mode here uh fix up that background and then I'll go grab my tea and we'll be ready for some Hyper Metroid action. And if you don't know what that is, I'll explain. Hyper Metroid. Uh, this is a Super Metroid ROM hack uh, created by one Trevor Real Red Sitkoff. It is. This is considered to be a very good Super Metroid ROM hack. It was uh, recommended to me by uh, occasional viewer of the stream here, Sarabo. And uh, yeah, he recommended this one pretty strongly. I've had a couple other people familiar with this ROM hack uh, drop in and second his re recommendation, say that, yep, this is a really good one. You should check it out. So yeah, here I am. And sure enough, it's uh, it's been a really good time so far. We are kind of stuck at the moment. I What, what do we got? We got grappling beam. We got morph ball. We got bombs. And we got our super jump. Got the high jump boots, and uh, yeah, I'm not really sure where to go from there. We can see our first boss, probably Kraid, up there in Brinstar. The way that Kraid's head, or the boss head moves around, you see the way that jitters in the top right as I move this around? Anyways, uh, weirdly enough, so I've got all of these new abilities, and you can kind of see, oh, the path to the boss is up top. On the top end of Brinstar here. I can't actually get up there. All of the things blocking me off are uh, green doors, and I don't have super missiles yet. So I'm thinking maybe we need to head off to some other some other section of the map, some other area. Oh yeah, we got X-ray beam, so I guess I, we could just, as a last resort, start sweeping that absolutely everywhere. In fact, I did that at the end of last night's stream when we found this... Uh, little tunnel up here which doesn't actually lead anywhere except a big spike corridor upward that I can't jump up I'm assuming that's actually where we're gonna fall down after we uh, defeat Kraid up top there but we'll see how it goes uh, we've been spending a lot of time in Brinstar and Criteria lately so I, f I feel like this would be a good, a sensible time to start checking out the other areas of the ga of the game if we can find any of them. Looks like Criteria is the only place we can get to from Brinstar. Oh, actually, no, we got the uh, the elevator to Norfair down below. Although, if you go, if you enter Norfair that way, uh, it's just a dead end with a bunch of lava at the bottom, and I can't do anything with it just yet. Uh, this downward elevator to Criteria is like the beginning of the game. This takes you right back to Samus's ship where we started, which might be something we want to try. Have I been over here yet? I have. That's cool the way that the Morph Ball 
keeps your momentum as you're going up. I, I don't think it worked that way in Super Metroid. I think it kills your vertical momentum when you enter Morph Ball in Super Metroid. Oh yeah, we got Wave Beam too, which is super exciting. I don't think it lets us do anything or get anywhere that we couldn't before. I haven't seen any of the uh, the one-way doors that Wave Beam is usually helpful for getting you through, but it's super helpful for just busting up enemies. So much stronger than your basic arm cannon. Uh, this is a blind jump. I'm not a big fan of this. Yeah. Might be able to wall jump this. There it is. Oh yeah, and then that one was a uh, a gray door. Actually, you know what it is. Okay, I was thinking maybe killing all the enemies in the room would uh, open that up for us. It's a suspicious little mouth guy down there. Eh. That one floor mouth guy that you can go through in Super Metroid is like a... I don't know, it's led me astray so many times. Every time I, pl Every time I see one of those in a suspicious location in this ROM hack, I'm thinking, oh, I should jump in there and see if there's something, something in there. And there never is. Ah, uh, so that was a big fall. Big fail and a big fall. Uh, there's nothing up here. Yeah, let's just go all the way back to the start of the game, and we'll just sweep, sweep across with all of our... Sweep across all of the areas we've been to already, with all of our new items and abilities. Namely, X-Ray Scope. Oh, oh, oh! Trying to hide that from me. It... That doesn't actually show up on the map. There's no dot on the map showing that there's an item here. That's dirty. Man, I really don't want to sweep every single wall with x-ray scope. But that might but that might be what we end up resorting to. I mean, this is kind of how I played through the original Super Metroid, my first time through it. Oh, wrong button there. It's always cool playing a new Metroidvania, though, especially a one that's based on kind of a familiar format, but not too familiar. Like, it's Super Metroid, but it's a little bit different. Like the... I think we hit this one already. Yeah. It feels like it controls a bit different, some of... not super different, it's mostly the same, but yeah, there are some new moves. Uh, the high jump works differently, everything looks a little bit different, like even the pop, even the bombs look kind of different. So, you know, it's like, it's like, it's the same, but different. That's kind of a complaint you see from some people when it comes to... Uh, retro games, especially remakes and revivals of old franchises. It's like, oh, it's this is just the same game again. Why couldn't they try something new? Like, I've seen people say that about Sonic Mania, and it's like, I don't know. I guess in some sense, yeah, it's exciting to see new and exciting things, but Old and Familiar has always done it for me, too. Like, all of these old games, your the classics, your Sonic the Hedgehogs, your Super Metroids, like those were brilliant games. I'm all for just give me those old games again with new level layouts. Like just give me Super Metroid again with a new map so I can experience Super Metroid again like new, like it was for the first time. It's the same with some sequels where they say, oh, it's, they didn't... This new sequel doesn't reinvent the wheel, or whatever, meaning that it doesn't innovate is usually what people mean when they say that. Which is not really what the phrase reinvent the wheel typically means. Usually that phrase, mean, uh, reinventing the wheel, means uh, exerting wasted effort to figure out something. 
that's been figure out a problem that's been solved already. Oh yeah, we've been through here before. Although, what was stopping me from going up this way? Those uh, missing top squares of rooms is pretty suspicious because we've got our jump, our high jump boots now, so we can jump pretty high. It's got to be something really funky going on for me to not be able to advance upwards. And sure enough, we got a collapsible floor in the way. Actually, I can't really get up here without some bomb jumping shenanigans. Bomb jumping in this game, incidentally, is really, really easy. Yeah, there's no... unless maybe speedball is a thing in this game. Have we seen any new upgrades in this game so far? I've heard that there are some. We got high jump boots, morph ball, bomb, charge, and wave beam. So your standard... Oh, hey, Samus is looking snazzy. Is it like, what is this? Like, X additional detail in the artwork or something? It seems less... In the pause screen here, Samus seems like less gritty and pixelated and more shiny or something. Anyways, it's a cool look. I like it. But yeah, I guess we could x-ray scope up there and see if there's some way around, but I don't think that's what the game is communicating to us. And then again, I have misinterpreted the things that this game is communicating to us a few times before. Like when I almost missed out on grapple beam. When I was walked into the room with all the grappling blocks, and I was like, oh, this room requires grappling beam. I'll come back later. And then I said, fuck it, I'll just damage boost my way across, and it turns out that the thing on the other end of that room is the grappling beam. Some people would call that sort of thing bad. Bad design. Bad Metroidvania design, but... Uh, but I don't, and I can't think of a better explanation for it than that. Like, in a Metroidvania, you're supposed to, especially Super Metroid, you're supposed to kind of challenge your assumptions and don't just take what the game presents you with at face value. You should be encouraged to poke around and question your assumptions a bit. Meridia especially forced you to do that a lot in the original game. Okay, so do we have, like, what, another... Oh, we can go to Meridia or Norfair. Oh, you know what? I think that door to... One of those doors is a missile door, because I didn't even have missiles the first time I went through this area. We've also got the wrecked ship. Also, I might as well drop a save. Oh, hey there, uh, Jade Oak. Uh, yes, this is a Super Metroid ROM hack. It is called Hyper Metroid. I am told that it is very good by a few of my viewers who have played this one before, so I decided to give this one a shot on their recommendation. And sure enough, it is very, very good based on what I've seen so far. It's not a... doesn't seem like an especially ambitious hack so far either. Like, they've changed some of the graphical effects and the color palette. They make really good use of the Metroid graphics and just shifting the colors a bit and using the graphics in a bit of a different way to present a whole new flavor to the original game's areas. I haven't seen any new abilities yet. Like, if we look at the stuff we've picked up so far, it's your standard Metroid arsenal. Oh, I accidentally shut off Charge Beam. Yeah, Charge Beam, Wave Beam, Morph Ball, Bombs, and High Jump Boots. But the jump you start the game with is the equivalent of the original game's High Jump. And this is your jump with High Jump Boots. It's like twice as high, or not twice as high, but... This game's High Jump is a lot higher than the original game's High Jump. There are also little tweaks like... Uh, your shot works a bit differently. It's more obvious with the original beam. Like, if you look 
you look at this here, the physics of your regular shot are a bit different. It's got some acceleration to it, and it also carries your momentum when you're running. So yeah, you can see how it's uh, being a bit weird there. Uh, the charge shot in this game is super powerful. I think it's actually stronger than standard missiles, which I guess was eventually true of charge shot in the original game as well. There's also a couple, like, neat little moves. This one we picked up a while back. So it's like a new... Like, we, we've still got wall jump. That's a bad wall to demonstrate it, but we still got wall jump, and we've also got a new kind of hidden move, which is like a back dash, which gets you a very long uh, horizontal jump. You get that by crouching, holding B, and then jumping back. Gets you one of those. And this is something that the Metroid experts have been telling me about, which is really cool. This basically simulates the effects of a damage boost. So it's actually not even a brand new ability, really. This is just something that extra that expert Metroid players can just do uh, anytime there's an enemy or spike on screen. They're just making it like more accessible and easier for casual players to pull off. So it's it's twisting the basic Metroid formula and the basic Super Metroid power-up set, or the basic Metroid tool set a fair bit in kind of interesting ways. It's like I was saying earlier, it's it's the same, but different. Not that much different, but different enough to keep things fresh and interesting for me, at least. Which I really appreciate in a ROM hack. I don't Really, I appreciate the ambitious, like, total conversion ROM hacks that make things completely different, but I especially appreciate the ones that, where it's just, like, the game, main, it's the basic game again. All the basic controls and stuff you're familiar with, it's like the same game all over again with new levels in kind of a, kind of tweaked slightly. It's like you get to experience Super Metroid for the first time again. Got a new map and some new cool little tools and abilities for you to discover and play around with. The backward long jump? I actually don't know that one from uh, Mario 64. Okay, so a collapsible. Like, it looks to me like we're going to get some powers that weren't in the original. Like, for ex unless there's a secret one. So we've seen a few uh, little tunnels like this where it looks like we need to mock ball across. Actually, mock ball might still be a thing in this game. It's going to be a tricky to set up in this room. Especially with that wall there. I'm not going to try this too much. But yeah, we've seen a few setups like this. where So it looks like we're going to get some kind of power-up to also give me the abilities of the mock ball which is like a Metroid speedrun trick, kind of a glitch in the game. So it looks like we're going to get some kind of speedball to get across these at some point. Yeah, that's the other thing, is this hack is actually really accessible. It's kind of, It looks like the designers approached it with kind of the mindset that this... Uh, how to describe it? Like, it's not just for Metroid, for Super Metroid experts. This is like the kind of... You could play this hack having never played the original Super Metroid before and have this be your first Metroid experience and you're not going to be missing out on any crucial knowledge or anything. It uh, eases you into things. Although there are opportunities for you to uh, flex your knowledge a bit if you're coming in with a bit of experience. For example, these, the Etacoons here are not here the first time you come through this area. So if you know how to wall jump, you can just go up here and uh, get early missiles your first time through this area. Uh, do I have ball bombs? You mean like just the regular bombs? Oh yeah, that's another thing they tweaked is uh, the radius on your bomb explosion is a bit more so it's like Bomb jumping is a bit more like zero mission. I can't get the timing down here. Yeah, bomb jumping is super easy in this game. I haven't seen any part, any anything I can unlock or any secrets I can get to by doing it. But yeah, bomb jumping is as easy in this game as it was in zero mission.
And actually, the, uh, the little spread bomb you get there for morphing while charged also seems a bit more practical. Oh, also... What's going on there? Oh, if I hold down, down, that's cool. Okay. Charge shot, hold down. And then it holds on to the bomb burst until I let go of down. And I get more height the longer I hold it. That is weirdly... Like, what's the utility of that? Why do I want to do all those things? <laughs> Whatever, it's cool. Actually, can I get through there? Yeah, it's hard to distinguish between... Once you got the wave beam, it's hard to tell if uh, you found a hidden wall or if it's just wave beam going through stuff. That wall looks suspicious, though. There's something funny about that wall, as uh, our old fairy friend from Symphony of the Night liked to tell us. Wait a second. Yeah, this is where we want to go. I think the door to Norfair here was a missile door, so I should be able to go through here this time around. Damn it. Oh, and this one was like a purple door or some shit. Okay, so it's a power bomb door, so nothing down here for us. I'm just going to check out Torian again. I think we were blocked off by a bunch of gates. That's actually one of the strange things about this hack. There's a lot of uh, kind of lock and key design going on here. Uh, several of those gray doors that only open when you beat bosses. I think the original Super Metroid had only one of those. Or maybe two in Meridia, the door to the plasma beam. Oh, hey, we can get up here now. Door to the Plasma Beam was uh, locked until you beat Dragon, and there's a couple doors like that we've seen so far that only open once you beat a boss, and there's also a new type of door. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? A uh, new type of door where you have to hit a switch. There's like 15 switches hidden throughout the game that open specific doors. And if we go into the Turian here, it's kind of like the statue room in the original Super Metroid Turian area. We go over here, and there's the 15 doors. Is it 15? Maybe it was 14. Yeah, 15 doors. So we're, so that's, it's not the bosses we necessarily need to kill to open up Turian. It's finding all of these 15 switches. As you can see, we've found, what is it, one, one, two, four. I missed three, which is kind of interesting. I probably, I probably missed three. Like, I, I should probably have found that, and I didn't, and that's probably locking one of the gray doors that's, uh, keeping me away from Kraid right now. Also, that passageway off to the left is, uh, intriguing. Unfortunately, this was still a dead end for us, so I'm kind of running out of areas to investigate. Wait, wasn't there a second gateway to Norfair? Yeah, we've seen two doors into Norfair. We took the one of them, and it was a dead end. I can't remember what was behind the second one. This hack does weird things with the music sometimes, too. Like, they use music in some areas that you wouldn't see as area music in the original game. Like, they use the Metroid theme for some areas. Yeah, like, here it is, right here. This is the main theme from Metroid. Oh, well, this seems obvious. It's like the wall is screaming, break me. It's probably, I was going to say, it's probably missiles. <laughs> yeah, such a dull, well, that's a bit interesting. Why? Why is there a random breakable block down here? 
Just so I can, what, shove bombs up this Chozo statue's butt? Oh, these are all bombable for some reason. Maybe just to indicate that all walls of that, that share that block type, are bombable. Well, this shaft is a lot easier to climb with the wave beam now. Uh, I feel like I already checked out that dot up on the top left there, but I could be mistaken. I am very forgetful, so we'll go check that out, and then we'll come back and check out the door to Norfair. Actually, why would I do that? Unless the door to Norfair is here, and the dot is up there. We'll just check out the thing that's here. I don't have power bombs yet. That'd be a funny joke. <laughs> it's like if you could shatter that glass tube and it just shatters the tube and there's nowhere to go. Because you're just inside the wall instead of inside like a water area that you can wander around in. I don't know, I just think it would be a funny Easter egg if you could power bomb a glass tube that, and it just didn't lead anywhere. What was that explosion over here? It looks like I blew up some blocks, but I didn't actually see blocks. This whole corridor is suspicious. Yeah, I think this ROM hack is better than to just hide random breakable blocks behind random bullshit, so I think I'm not gonna go scanning every single wall. Just the suspicious ones. Like, this is a little bit suspicious. Right, so I am still gonna keep scanning every single wall. I'll just find some excuse to call them suspicious. Uh, what was over this way again? That's the way to Brinstar. Or Brainstar, as I used to call it when I was, like, nine. Is that right? No, I would have been like seven or eight when I first played this game. Yeah, this was the one with the lava pit. I don't think there's anything to do here without... There's, there's a one place it looks like you can get to with an exceptionally tricky wall jump. I tried it multiple times and couldn't do anything with it, but it looks doable. And then this one's sealed with a gray door. Which is frustrating. And then we don't have uh, gravity suits, so we gotta be a little bit careful. Oh! There's a ledge there! I'm an idiot. There's a ledge there. We, can, we didn't need to... So what I was trying to do last time I was in here was, uh... Oh, you know what? We can do that, too. I was trying to make that wall jump, and it was difficult. Did I not have high jump boots last time I came in here? I think that's it. I think I just didn't think to try this room again after we picked up high jump. I think I came back here when I got uh, the grappling beam. Because, yeah, that's an easy jump. I don't even need wall jump. Okay, so this is the way. This is the way, brothers. Maybe. Nope, this is not the way. This is not the way. Although it could be. I think I saved not too long ago. I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, hell runs! Nope, this was a mistake. I can already tell this was a mistake. Fuck. What do you guys want to bet that I'm not gonna make it out of here in time? Clutch! Cool, now we got that lovely siren going. Until I find a health refill station, which I don't think actually exists in this game. Thankfully, the, uh, the health drops are extremely generous. Like, anytime you're missing health, you will always get a big health drop, as far as I've seen. So we shouldn't have to suffer this for too long. Ah. 
Yep, there it goes. Well, that was exciting for, uh, like half a second when it looks like we might be able to get somewhere. Oh yeah, you can suck in power-ups with your charge shot. I think you might have been able to do that in the original. I don't quite remember. I almost never used charge shot in Super Metroid. There's not you really much there's not really much reason most of the time since you want to spam super missiles against most bosses. But yeah, the power-ups move towards you really rapidly in this game. It's like you don't even have to start charging. Like if let's see if we can find a, Yeah, if I just rapid fire, <laughs> it'll just pull them all towards me. Also, you can collect uh, collect pickups with the grappling beam, which I don't know if that was possible in the original or not. Because I tend to skip grappling beam in Super Metroid once I realized that... Once I learned how to skip grapple beam, I stopped getting it on subsequent playthroughs. That was close. Excuse you. Yeah, look how quickly we got back up to full health from almost zero. Oh, you know what? I remember this room. There's nothing here. That really sucks, because that means the only place for us to go now is Brinstar. Which we've already combed over pretty thoroughly at this point. Okay, is there anything going on here? I thought this looked suspicious before. Like, there's no way you can drop onto those spikes unless you walk off this platform. Because this platform here is right over top of them. Uh, I'd go over and grab that save point, but I don't think we've done anything productive since I started up tonight's run. I guess we got that one missile pack, so that's something. I guess I will take the next save point we find. Yeah, I think we just need to find the most suspicious room available to us and just poke around in it. Definitely those topmost rooms, the ones that look like they'll lead to Kraid. Oh yeah, there was also that alternate entrance into Norfair. Oh, now that's a thing. Although... Yeah, we've been down here before. Why do I want to be down here? This is pretty suspicious. Apparently we've been down here. I don't remember finding this. Like, seriously, we've been in these rooms? Oh, this was... what was this? This is where we got the x-ray beam. That's right, that's right. Okay, so yeah, we got what we need out of this little secret area. Uh, we're running out of options. Like, if, if the way forward isn't this elevator to Norfair, or one of these rooms up top, I don't know what we're gonna do. Like, that is a very pink map right now. There's not a lot of unexplored territory left to reveal, other than the stuff that I know we can't get to.
Yeah, I guess we're gonna just wind around and check out that Norfair elevator. I don't remember I don't remember what's down that way at all. Oh yeah, I did want to talk a little bit about my Fire Emblem 4 playthrough, but actually I think I'll save that until some people show up who are actually uh, following that. I feel like I've been the whole point of the playthrough was to like try to save time and not take 110 hours to beat the game this time, and I'm kind of falling into old bad habits and letting things like the arena and just overthinking my turns generally. Uh, really bogged me down. I spent like two and a half hours doing arena runs for Chapter 3 last night, and it kind of, made, kind of made me just reflect on my life choices in general. Which, you know, I guess you're at leisure to do during a uh, three and a half hour stint of mindlessly grinding arena battles. Okay, so we can't actually get back up anymore. Oh no, we can. With uh, Grappling Beam. Oh yeah, I gotta keep an eye out for those statues too. Because yeah, Charge Beam is actually good for something in this game. Actually, I think that might be something this game has that the original Super Metroid doesn't, is actually a use for charge beam. Because, yeah, there are certain types of blocks that can only be broken by it. I do feel like the game is kind of leading me down this Norfair elevator. I remember, I just vaguely remember feeling so happy that I found that little, uh, this little tunnel down here. And then the feeling of crushing disappointment when it ended up not leading anywhere. Okay, so we got a green... This is a bullshit green door right here. Like, we can easily go to the other side of that door. This is just a shortcut. We just can't open it up because we don't have super missiles yet. What was stomping us down here? Oh, that was what was stopping us down here. Well, we just took a save point not long ago, so I'm just gonna check this shit out and see if we can't find some bullshit. We'll at least know what we have to look forward to later on when we come back here with Varia. Okay, so it was as simple as that. That's the reason why you don't go to Norfair right off the bat. Oh yeah, I've been meaning to try and get a better look at Naked Samus during the death animation. It looks like she's fully naked. But I haven't been able, you know, because of how quickly it plays out, I haven't been able to get a good look. I'm trying to make a point of freeze framing it for science. Uh, so that's miserable. So yeah, every single place where we're blocked off is by a green door. Either a green door or a gray door. And then there's this place up here where we can't jump high enough to get over the spikes.
Maybe there are some x-ray shenanigans going on. Like some really counterintuitive shit that I'm gonna need x-ray scope to uncover. Still impressed by that high jump. That block looks super suspicious. But there's nothing to it. Yeah, I can't get through this guy. Yep, I am running out of ideas and running out of places to explore. And since this is kind of this is a ROM hack, even though it is a popular ROM hack, I don't know that there's going to be a big enough fan community online for me to find like a walkthrough or nothing. Which, you know, I prefer not to use anyways for games that I'm streaming, especially with the Metroidvanias and such, where exploration and finding the way forward is kind of the point. And using a guide kind of renders that point a bit pointless. But it's a compromise that has to be struck between my own satisfaction and personal enjoyment versus the viewer's enjoyment. And I don't know how fun it's going to be for you guys to watch me just stumble around in the same, like, couple dozen rooms, not figuring out where I'm supposed to go next. Like, yeah, what was even over here the first time around? Was this just a missile pack? Yeah, I guess it wasn't I guess it wasn't that much of an arduous trek to get up there. Kinda wish I had Spring Ball. That was actually one of the quality of life features I really appreciated in Zero Mission is uh the high jump boots give you spring ball at the same time. No, there's not space for secrets over here. Yeah, we have to we have to look at the map and think about yeah, this door right here. So now we're on the other side of that green door that leads to the Norfair door. That's kind of suspicious. Like it it looks this is such a bullshit door that I'm it's it's just a very useful shortcut, which makes me think that the game expects me to have super missiles at this point that I'm just missing something that's blinkeringly obvious. Okay, this is where we get to all kinds of interesting shit. So we've got unexplored rooms over off to the left, a lot of empty space below us, and presumably the place to go- yeah, if we look, if we manage to get up top here, through that door at the top of this room, then that takes us all the way to Kraid. if we can actually get th through that door, but I think it was a super missile door. Which we can't do just yet. And then this one over here, I believe, was a gray door. Unless we just need to kill everything in this room, that would be kind of... dumb if that's what I was missing. Or no, it's the next room.
Okay. So we can kind of get up here. No grapple turtles. You would kind of expect to be able to grapple those turtles. But you can't. That block is specifically there, I think, to prevent me from doing what I want to do. Which is make a running jump off to the left. Now, according to the game logic, this is just a dead end. We can't jump high enough to get up here. We don't have freeze or anything. We can get up here with wall jump, but that shouldn't be required to go forward. Since wall jump is still kind of a secret move. It's not part of the game's internal log logic as to... Or the, the design logic as far as the flow of the game's progression. And it's a green door anyway, so yeah. That's like three different reasons for us not to be here. And then this room. With this weird spiky tendril. And yeah, we can't get up there without wall jump. And even if we do, I think it's another green door. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's another green door. And with that, we've basically come full circle, because we started out... Oh, not quite. There's a bit of... No, yeah, and then, we're, and then we've just gone around in a circle. So yeah, I'm completely stuck. I guess the next best thing would be that room off to the right, except that one's also blocked by a super missile door. What the fuck is going on? Oh, what about that save room down there? Maybe that's the way. Oh, I see. It gives you the big yellow S on the save room you used last. That's kind of handy. Can't remember if the original Super Metroid did that or not. Oh yeah, this is that, uh... The grappling beam room I liked so much. This this is what I was talking about earlier. You come in here and it's like, oh, I need grappling beam to get across here. But grappling beam is across there. You can either damage boost to get through or you can bomb this little crack here. And that takes you to the other side. Which I thought was a funny little trick. Is there any way I can turn this into a shortcut? Because that'd be really handy if I could just get to the other side of this wall. Nah. Well, at this point, I'm actually open to suggestions from chat, or even spoilery suggestions from people who know the game already, because I have no idea what we're supposed to do next. I guess this little bit of teeth right here looks a bit suspicious now that I think of it. Oh yeah, this was just a missile pack. This is what I was talking about earlier. You need charge shot to clear that away. Anything else we could do over here?
Well, I guess we'll mess around on the right side of Brinstar again. I've, I've probably examined the right half of Brinstar more than any other place on the map, but I don't know where else to look. There's all that empty space. Like, you see there's that one detached room off to the side, and then a bunch of empty space in between. Maybe we need to interrogate that a little bit more. Namely, with the X-ray scope. Yeah, there's nothing else we can... we just have to go all the way back up. I guess it must have been the red turtles that were the ones that, uh, that you can use the grapple beam on. Although this ROM hack has changed all the palettes, the color palettes of all the enemies, so that probably doesn't hold up anymore. That's kind of a suspicious... Nope. Uh, you know what? I'll take the save just in case. Actually, we have, a, we have seen secrets right next to save points. Not too long ago. Ah, uh, there's nothing. You know, even if there's not a, uh, a text walkthrough of this game, of this ROM hack, I bet you that there's a YouTube long play, so I guess I could use that as a, uh, as a way of figuring out what to do next. Although I don't like doing that on stream, because that's like the most tedious way to look up solutions to stuff you're stuck on. Is there anything else going on in here? I don't even remember what this was. Missiles, maybe. Actually, one helpful thing to do a lot of the time when you're stuck in a Metroidvania is to backtrack to the last major item that you collected, like the last big progression item. Most of these games are designed in such a way that the there will be hints kind of suggesting the way forward after you grab each major item. Or kind of a, uh, a subtle path guiding you forward if you kind of look for the hints. I didn't see anything like that after we grabbed... What was the last major pickup we got? X-ray scope, I guess. Also, we don't, ri we don't actually have a good way across this pit without damage boosting. I guess you can take the long way around through the door. Actually, now that I think of it, I've always taken the shortcut by damage boosting across the pit. 
So there could be something down here. Oh yeah, and then this goes down to Criteria, which we just came out from. Well, I think that's it. I think I've given you guys the grand tour of every room in the game that I have access to right now. And we still haven't found anything that's going to get us forward. Yeah, and then we've got that already by blasting that statue out of the way. Okay, now's the time to start looking for suspicious shit. Yeah, I think we'll just go around this little concave. Oh, hey. Blinking door. So apparently I haven't opened this door yet. That could be significant. remember what this was. Oh, was this our high jump? If it was, this is where I should probably start looking for clues. Oh, how am I supposed to get out of the water here? Oh, that's how you do it. Okay, so it's not really along the bottom, but maybe off to the right. In the next room, we might find something. No, this looks very familiar. Yeah, we've been, we've been here already. And then at the top, it was a gray door. Maybe killing the turtle? Oh! No, we tried that already. Turtle doesn't do it. It's gotta be a switch then. Oh, you know what? Okay, so I didn't mention this, but those circle points on the map, those are switches. So actually, I would almost guarantee you that the way forward here is to hit that switch in that uh, that disconnected room off to the right. We'll start from the bottom. I uh, regret... Uh, we're fine. I don't think it's going to be down here. I think it's going to be higher up. Hey, Axel. How is it going? I'm doing all right, sort of. I mean, I'm hopelessly stuck in this video game, but if you, if you look at the big picture, there are much, much worse situations to be stuck in in life, so all things considered, I'm doing all right.
I mean, the, the shitty thing is, it really looks to me like it's gonna be the Grey Door. Like, the Grey Door looks like the obvious path forward, unless that's the way back out after we hit the switch. That could be the other thing that it could be. Okay, so it's not going to be to the left. Oh, and then we got the music change here. That's a bit suspect. Okay, th yeah, this room is suspicious as hell. We need to scope this shit. Oh, somebody got in there before you? Eh, I guess that's fine. You can't be first every time. Can I not get back up here? This is bullshit. No way am I going all the way up and around to get to the top of this shaft. No way. Actually, it wouldn't be that bad. We just go down and to the left and up. Uh, yes, this is Hyper Metroid. Were you here when I was playing this yesterday? I thought you were. Actually, even, yeah, even if I do abuse wall jump, I don't think we can get up there, so up and around it is. This map can be annoying to backtrack sometimes. The same might have been true for the original Super Metroid. It's, it's actually hard for me to evaluate Super Metroid like as a Metroidvania just in terms of map design and how well it suggests or how well it clues you into its intended progression path. Like I... I memorized Super Metroid by the time, or didn't memorize it, but I learned it well enough to not have to question those things pretty early on. Like, I learned Super Metroid before I started evaluating, evaluating those types of things in games. Uh, can you drown? No. I don't think any Metroid game has ever had drowning in it. I mean, Samus is in a space suit, basically. Like, it's probably designed so that she can breathe in the vacuum of space, so... Even if she can't move freely underwater, I'd, I'd imagine she can breathe just fine. This is fun. I like how you can do this. Is there something up here? I feel like there used to be something up here. It was probably a health pickup. Okay, so this is the most suspicious point on the map to me right now. I think I might be able to damage boost through this. No, that ceiling's down too low. Like, if I could jump up there somehow... Actually, I might be able to do it from here. No. No, this seems pretty deliberately designed to not let you wall jump up. Oh yeah, that's right, it was Spore Spawn that gave us the high jump ability. He was on the other end of this room, I think.
Oh wait, this wasn't the room we want to check out. It was the next one over. Yeah, this is Spore Spawn. Up here was a switch. Over there is the save point. It's gotta be this room. There's gotta be some other bullshit in this room that I just missed. No, th it, this I remember. I remember this room though. I scoured every inch of this floor with the X-ray beam. There's nothing in here. Oh, this is making me mad. Driving me up the wall here. Maybe there's something up top that I missed. I don't... Yeah, clearly I haven't been jumping to check the ceiling of every point of this room. Because we've got uncovered ceiling tiles. Okay, now we don't and there was nothing there. And now we're back where we started. We have gone full circle around the entire map. I haven't found a damn thing. What the fuck am I missing here? Okay, the most suspicious thing was that gray door. All the other doors blocking us off are super missile doors, but that one is gray. Though I'm guessing that's the door that we come out of after we find the way to that switch off to the side. That's interesting. How the fuck did I do that? I like exploded myself off to the side there, almost the same way that uh, that you can with this move. Well, okay, there's nothing in this room. Nothing down below. Ugh. I think I'm just about ready to give up at this point. I'll wait for one of the people who's actually played this game to show up and chat and just, I don't know, drop a hint at what we're supposed to do next. Because I have no... Damn clue. sweep it with the x-ray beam one more time. Maybe there'll be something this time. Yeah, this is officially the most suspicious room on the map. And so if we look at the next place, the game kind of... So, okay, this was where we got our high jump boots. And then the next game, or the next place that the game kind of leads you to after that is back to Criteria, back to the start of the game. Actually, this is also pretty suspicious. We should, we should check 
these areas again. so frustrating that I can't turn the camera fast enough. There we go. Okay, I would have been pissed if there was something on those walls since it's so tricky to get the camera over there to use x-ray beam. Like, it wouldn't be down and around, is it? Because down is the way to criteria. This looks kind of... Oh, right, there used to be a, uh, an energy tank in there. It's kind of distressing that that's destructible and doesn't show up on the radar scope. Actually, I guess it could be a secret passageway down this tunnel that leads back up into the switch. Also, we've got unfilled map squares off to the right here. Oh, you know what I haven't tried yet? Uh, the wrecked ship over there. Also, there seems to be, yeah, that wall is preventing me from filling in those map squares. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was the, uh, uh, yeah, the little tunnel, the morph ball tunnel with the collapsing floor that was stopping us from going forward there. I don't want to blame, like, the game or the designer or anything for me getting stuck. And if the solution was just go to a wrecked ship the whole time, because like I said, that's kind of where it seems the game is halfway guiding us. Then yeah, this will just be my own stupidity that's been getting us stuck so far. The problem with the wrecked ship is that there's a bunch of water... So it's going to be a pain in the ass to navigate. Also, what about up top here? There's a switch up there, too. It looks like we've been here. Yeah, it looks like we probably got a shine spark to get up there. Like, hey, Samus, how about you fly your ship? That's what it's for, right? Flying? Just fly it up there and go through that tunnel. Um... Oh, yeah, there's that side path to Meridia, too. I guess we had a couple more options before we... ...give up. In fact, I don't even remember what was specifically stopping us from going forward here. I think I just, uh, just didn't explore this room very much because... Uh, yeah, exploring underwater with no gravity suit is like 12 kinds of butts in Metroid games. Actually, with the high jump, uh, we're not that bad off.
Interesting. This looks like it should be a ladder that I can climb. Yeah, we can't wall jump up here, though. Unless there's a grapple point. Yeah, it looks like we're stuck here. Although, that is a number one gate over there that I can just barely see on the extreme right-hand side of the screen. And we have opened the number one gate, so it's kind of signaling to me that we should be able to get through this. Also, I think that's a platform up there. Because, yeah, if you look at this type of block, that's the same type of block they use over here. So, yeah, that's actually a platform I can jump onto. Maybe, if I can actually jump that far. Get over there! Nope. Yeah, unlike the original wrecked ship outside area in Super Metroid, it doesn't look like there's any grapple blocks or anything I can use to get over there. I don't think there's anything we can do until we get the, uh, the gravity suit. Then I guess our last option is to check out the path to Meridia down to the right, and then our next step after that is to give up and play Fire Emblem 4. Oh, we can make that jump. And yes, this is a platform, although it's not helpful. As much as I liked the idea of the extreme high jump at first, it really... It's kind of annoying when it, the way it forces you to make these extremely long, blind jumps. Like, I'm actually going to be kind of irritated if this was the way forward all along. Like, this has got to be some kind of bonus, right? Some kind of sequence break? There's no way that the intended path forward is a series of, like, extreme bullshit, trial and error, long jumps across a big-ass puddle of water. And then again... Okay, we got a missile pack. That's a good sign that this wasn't anything important. And we got speed blocks, which is also a good sign that this is not what we're supposed to be doing right now. Eh, that's something. And then we're through the one gate. And then we're in the wrecked ship and there's no more water. Well, fuck. Is that a Metroid on the monitor in the background? Kind of weird looking. Oh, there's the water. Are these spikes? I'm just going to assume they're spikes. Uh, so th this, the wrecked ship seems to be less changed than the other areas we've seen in this ROM hack. This is, yep, very wrecked ship-like. Oh, and there's the boss right over there. We also got a save point off to the right, so I think I'll just hit that first so we don't have to do all this shit again. That looks like a Metroid down there. Uh, 
Oh dear. Well, okay, no save point for me. Unless we go down and around. Really, I think what we want to do is just go towards all of the items we can see on the map and hope we can get super missiles or something. Uh, that's going to be really aggravating, though. If this ended up being the correct path forward, because this felt kind of stupid. Having to make that sequence of blind jumps across the water. Although, I guess they were made possible by the long jump. So in that regard, it kind of makes sense. This feels like a significant room. Like maybe there might be super missiles up here. I want to cheat my way across here? I kind of do. Let's go. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Nope, 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 nope. Well, okay, that was a bad idea. And then I don't have an accessible save point either, so I have to do all this shit again if I die. I really feel like this is not the way forward. Although this is still the only progress we've seen in like an hour and a half of playtime tonight. So I don't really want to give this up. I want to keep exploring this place. Maybe I want to grind health off this guy a little bit. Just a little bit. We'll grind off this guy for just a little bit to make sure we don't have to redo all that crap. There we go. One energy tank should be plenty. Ah, uh, what else can we do here? I guess we can go down. I like the moss growing at the bottom of the ship here. Actually, this is an even better place to farm energy. We got two enemies on this one. Although we don't have an easy shot on them. Yeah, this is actually not a good place to farm energy. <sighs> What's even the point of those grapple blocks to the side if we have high jump? I'm just going to assume there's something deadly at the bottom here. Or deadly or annoying. Yeah, we're back in the water. I wonder if there's a way to sequence break this and get in here without the high jump. Because that's the only reason I can see for there being this many grapple blocks when I can just high jump my way up here. It's an item! What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Energy tank. Well, that actually helps us quite a bit, because now I'm less likely to game over here. Oh, we can kill these guys. Could have farmed them for energy. Tricky swing? Or is it? Damn it. God damn it. Oh, wait. Um, I think we've actually... Got an easier way up here. 
We get to do, yeah, the lovely 360 degree grapple swing around that I like so much. Get up there. Nice. Damn it. Okay. Oh, for fuck's sake. Why did I fall so quickly there? Oh, this is annoying. hate this. And again, I'm not even positive that this is where we're supposed to be right now, although I'm kind of thinking that it is, because we haven't found anything else suggesting that this isn't the place to be. Like, there's no super missile doors or anything blocking the path forward. Can we even... Can I even swing over there to do anything? Those grappling blocks were completely fucking pointless. I just assumed that I needed them to get across. Or maybe I can swing up top if I hit the rightmost one, but okay, that annoys me. Oh, are we in Meridia? Dang. Uh, gray doors. More gray doors. Yeah, we're, we're stuck here already. So, yeah. Maybe we did have to do the grapple beam thing after all. Although, I'll have to check the map. The hell is it? Oh, that's just a save point with... a ceiling and a floor. Uh-oh. Now we can get up here if we just hold the button. Actually, if you look, there's no way forward here. There, there's no door connecting to the right-hand side. I don't know, if I don't get anything out of these... this little grappling gauntlet... Like, it seems like there, there's maybe a way to grab onto the rightmost block down below, and then flip up top. That seems just obnoxiously difficult, though, and I was led to believe that this was not, like, a hack for advanced players only. At this point, I don't know... I honestly don't know whether to think that I'm just being stupid, or whether there's some stupid, obtuse design going on here. Because I, I... I'm just completely stuck. I have no idea 
what we're supposed to be doing, where we're supposed to go right now, if not doing this obnoxious swinging puzzle. accidentally went a bit too far forward. This can't be the way forward. This is too stupid. And I'm, I'm not even guaranteed that there's going to be any way up top. Although then what are the point? Of, what's the point of the grappling blocks? If not some way to get to the top. Okay, so we got this block, and now what? Yeah, we can't swing... Oh, there it is. Okay, that was obnoxious, but we do have something new up here. Oh, we got a save point. Okay, that's doubly good. I think I'm gonna be equally... equal parts distressed and happy if this is what we were supposed to do all along. On the plus side, we'll have found the way forward and we don't have to stop the playthrough short. And on the minus side, this was kind of all stupid. And I think it reflects poorly on the game as a whole that we had to do all that nonsense. Are these things infinitely respawning? Whatever, let's go forward. Okay, this is interesting. <laughs> uh, good thing we got a save point, because he's probably going to kill me. So this was... We do see the boss on the map. But this is not him. Like, the boss icon on the minimap shows a different portion of the map. Damn it. Well, we'll know to use missiles next time. Also, carefully examine the death animation. Yep, those are nips. They drew full nude Samus for the death animation. That explains a lot of things. That explains the safe... Oh, that is the boss room. I just wasn't paying attention to the map. Yeah, I thought that room was on the opposite side of the ship for some reason. Okay, so we... Probably want to spend a bit more time farming these molecule guys then. Kind of wish they gave you a more expedient farming method, but you know, this will do in a pinch. Oh, hey, we can kill him with the bombs. That was a lot of knockback. Knock back. Let's just go for it. I think we got him if we just use missiles this time. Uh, so this is completely different than the first time. <laughs> Uh, 
I mean, this is the original Fantoon. Same behavior, but, uh... Yeah, I think I just want to ignore the fireballs. Oh yeah, we almost got him. Nope, maybe I don't want to ignore the fireballs anymore. Yeah, I kind of need to get my missiles back. This does shit for damage. Unless I'm supposed to have supers for this fight. This is actually really obnoxious. Fuck. Other than spamming missiles, I don't know what different strategy I can use here. Can't believe I'm saying this, but I wish I wish I had more missiles for this fight. Normally, you don't care about missiles. For um, for Super Metroid, you generally always have more missiles than you even need. Hell, missiles become basically obsolete by the time by the time you're halfway through the game, anyways. I think I'm gonna farm every last energy pellet this time. Fuck. Ninety-eight's good enough. Okay, so he kicks it off with one of these. And then he goes into this crazy new pattern. Okay, so I think I kind of know how to dodge him once he starts charging at you. I don't know how to dodge the fireballs, though. I actually wish he'd throw more of them at me so that I can... Uh, I thought I'd do the early parts of the fight with Charge Beam. I think I might be done with this hack. This is just one stupid thing after another at this point. This went downhill fast. Unless this isn't where I'm supposed to be yet, and I just sequence broke by accident with that sequence of, uh... with that series of blind long jumps I had to do to get in here, and the ridiculous... uh, grapple beam nonsense. Actually, uh, hey, let's do what a smart person would do and save our game after we're f after we finish farming health this time. There we go. So that should. Oh no, we're fine. We can we can do this. We can do this. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Why do this? So it's a one-way. So the conveyor belts are here specifically to prevent me from uh, 
from saving after farming health and force me to redo that every single time I retry the boss. That's really fucking stupid. I all signs are pointing are pointing to done with this hack by now. This took a real fast downturn. Got a decent pattern here. Actually, we got a really good pattern here. Uh, and I'm out of and I'm out of missiles, and he's nowhere near dead. he's getting close. I don't think I've seen him this deep a shade of yellow before. <sighs> getting weird angry. And then sometimes he backs off just to fake you out. Oh, is that it? Please let that be it. It looks like it's it. Oh, this is kind of a cute touch. So this is the opposite of... Uh the wrecked ship in Super Metroid, killing the ghost, powers down the ship as opposed to powering it on. And now I can... Okay, so the conveyor belt bullshit kind of makes sense. A bit of an oversight that it... Oh, and now the save point is shut down. And now the save point is shut down. Ugh. <sighs> Well, okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, we gotta stop letting him do that to us. I'm just gonna assume that there's an infinite supply of those ghosts and keep on moving here. Besides, we want to farm up as much energy as we can get here. We don't have any nearby save points either. Like, the nearest save point is Samus's ship, I think. Now nah, I would have x-ray scoped these walls my f the first time through here. What does powering down the ship even get for us? inexplicably power on the save point over here. Oh, you know what it probably does is it probably uh, disables the locks on those gray doors. Because that was the only thing keeping us out of the rooms on this side of the ship was gray doors.
Okay, so we got these conveyor belts and this robot disabled. And the door is uh, unlocked. Okay. Uh, this looks a bit familiar. <laughs> Just the way that that breakable wall is laid out there is very reminiscent of uh, Super Metroid. Okay, there was a save point. Uh, let's just grab this item before we grab the save point. Save point's probably deactivated anyways. Ooh, I think I feel some super missiles coming on here. That would be really exciting. Um, I can't see where I'm going, so I guess we'll just jump. Oops, that was a weird one. Or I think if you hit jump, it takes you out of your grapple beam spin. Or maybe if you just hold back. I, I don't know what's doing that. Oh, that's how you do it. Yeah, so we can just get all the way up here. Uh, is that... Okay, various suit. For a second I thought that was uh, gravity jump. Or what? It, space jump. Woo. Woo. Sick, Varia suit. I think they they show this screenshot of uh, Varia suit Samus, and uh, on the screenshots page for this hack. Okay, so we can do the heated rooms in Norfair. Also, <laughs> as tantalizingly close as it seemed like Craig's lair was to us. Uh, yeah, it turned out that. Uh, Fantoon was our first major boss, assuming that I didn't, didn't fuck anything up with the sequence here. Which, I don't know, in retrospect, it seems like this was the way to go. And I guess I was just, I don't know, arbitrarily prejudiced against blind long jumps across water. It's not exactly arbitrary, that's kind of a stupid thing to force the player to do, in my opinion, but whatever. All the people who recommended this hack to me <laughs> seemed to have no problem with it. You know what would make up for all that bullshit is if I could get to that save point over there, and if it were actually active... Oof. Ooh, what is that? Oh, <laughs> it's power bombs. You can tell because they're behind blocks that look just like it, so I need power bombs to get those power bombs. Ah, uh, so that was kind of crappy. Okay. Yeah, I thought that looked suspicious, but... No gravity suit just yet, unless... Oh, yeah, with the high jump boots, you can actually wall jump underwater. You can even single wall jump. So in the original Super Metroid, uh... 
your high jump doesn't give you enough height underwater to be able to wall jump very effectively. I think you can technically single wall jump. Oh, I needed a wave beam to activate that one. Yeah, that's gate number 11. That, I don't know, I've got a strong feeling like I'm not supposed to be in here yet. Oh, you know what? Yeah, there's no way we're getting up there. Even with the gravity suit, I don't think we can get up there. This is gonna take, like, a shine spark or something. Also, so that's, op that's gate number 11 opened up. I don't think we've seen any gate number 11s yet on the map outside of Torian. Eh, forget about wall jumping. We'll just assume that wall jump isn't going to get us anything good in this section. Oh no, this looks unpleasant. I mean, really, I should probably just be backtracking at this point anyways. We got the various suit. I know exactly where we can go to use it. Actually, I need to... S I don't know why I'm doing this. Yeah, we need to single wall jump up there, and it's a dead end blocked by a, bom a power bomb door. Let's just get the hell out of here. This is actually kind of funny. This is sort of the, uh... Some of the stuff I was talking... Some of the stuff I was saying about the potential of, uh, Super Metroid ROM hacks. The, where the opportunities for amateur designers to buck conventions and kind of stake out their own styles. Go wild with, like, some bold innovations and stuff not sticking to the tried-and-true formula. I feel like not forcing the player to do too much underwater stuff without the gravity suit is part of the tried-and-true formula. And I think this wrecked ship section of, the, of this ROM pack here kind of demonstrates why it's part of the tried-and-true formula. I just... Moving underwater without gravity suit is not fun in Metroid games. I think I think fusion required a bit it a bit too, and those were the crappiest parts of fusion as well. But we're out of it now, so I'm gonna stop complaining. Also, the whole notion of powering down the ship instead of powering it on after beating Fantoon is kind of a funny inversion of the usual thing that happens in Super Metroid, but I feel like they didn't do much interesting with it. At least not yet. Like, all it really... the only effective difference it made was powering down my save point and causing me to swear a little bit about that. Makes for kind of an intense trek uh, back out of the ship, but I would probably be a lot less appreciative of that fact if I had gotten killed and been forced to backtrack. Anyways, uh, we're going down to Norfair now. Which, even though we're going underwater, I think this is still the quickest way there. It's weird the way the water drains when you go through that room. That's a lot of pickups. Oh yeah, what was blocking us over this way? Hmm. 
I don't remember this at all. Oh, right, it was this thing. I'm gonna give a couple tries at the mock ball. I feel like they specifically positioned that ceiling to make it impossible to mock ball. I don't even know that mock ball is a thing in this hack. I haven't tried to do it on uh, any floor where it's easy to pull off. Maybe I should experiment with it a bit. Try and see if there's another place with an easier setup that I can try to do a mock ball. It feels like I'm getting the input right, so maybe it's not a thing in this hack. Like, yeah, right here would be all right. Eh, maybe not. Oh yeah, we can't actually get to that Norfair down here, because that's a super missile door. We need to go to the elevator a little bit further. I feel like this uh, map is deliberately laid out in extremely twisty fashion in order to stymie my mock ball attempts. I guess that's just kind of a, a Metroid ROM hack trope in general, actually. It's just extremely cluttered map design with stuff poking all out all over the place from the ceiling and the floor. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing at all. It looks visually interesting, but it makes it difficult to experiment with and practice your mock balls, which is the relevant factor here. This room looks good. Yeah, it kind of looks to me like a uh, mock ball isn't a thing. Oh, I think we're doing it. No, that's the same speed. Maybe that's the sound effect. Uh, there it goes. Okay, that's very obvious when you get the mock ball, thanks to the new morph ball animation. Uh, am I going to play St Streets of Rage tonight? No, I've decided we're done with Streets of Rage on stream here. I've kind of had my fun with it. Uh, we, we got the 1cc. I've beaten the game with almost every character. Or at least played extensively with every character. Like, I've been doing the Streets of Rage thing for a week. We've seen the full game. Like, I've beaten the final boss of Streets of Rage 4 on stream, like, four or five times at this point. I think it's, yeah, time to move on. Okay, so Mock Ball is a thing. Just need to... Actually, yeah, that sound effect might be, like, a uh, indicator to help your Mock Ball timing. Because, yeah, you want to transform right next to the ground. Like, you want that flash to occur right when you're kneeling on the ground. Also, it looks super satisfying. With that blue sticking out from the helmet. Can we do it with low overhead clearance? That just looks so cool. I want a gif of that.
Yeah, I'm one of those douchebags who pronounces it GIF instead of instead of GIF. Because that's what the GIF guy told you to do. That was that's like an internet. Not exactly a controversy. It kind of is. It's kind of like the fiercest battlefront of the culture war is do you pronounce it GIF or GIF? And apparently the inventor of the format says it's supposed to be pronounced GIF. So that's what I say, because I am an authoritarian tool. And also a grammar prescriptivist. Cool, that should be enough stock to get me through Norfair. So anyways, we're not playing Streets of Rage tonight, but I am going to move on to uh, Genealogy of the Holy War. I haven't decided exactly when, basically, once I get sick of playing this game for the night. Which was actually going to be very quickly, until I started making progress through the wrecked ship. Oh dear. What was that? Three charge shots? Oh, that's what was blocking us off. <sighs> was blocking us off here was that gray door. And now here's the super missile door. That's just cruel. Why not just make this a green door? What the fuck? That looks really weird. That seahorse just floating above the lava. Actually, no, this wasn't, uh... That wasn't the door I was thinking of. Because, yeah, I don't think we've been in this area yet. Oh, no, we have! It's just got enemies now. There were no enemies here. The first time we came through here. Yeah, this looks all wavy, like a heated room, but it is not a heated room. The hot room is the one we're about to go into. Oh, I didn't get a health pickup. Also, our wave beam is kind of started starting to become obsolete. I think we're about due for a new beam pickup. Or maybe I'm just expected to charge shot a lot more than I am. I'm just going to assume, yep, all- oh, hey, we can go through the lava with, uh, Varia suit. Oh, it looks like it still counts as water physics, though. There is a thing that this game likes to do, is, uh, force you to backtrack through water or lava every time you fail a grappling beam challenge. And I guess that's what the game has to do, because with the ridiculous power of your high jump, like, yeah, they need the water down there to prevent you from just cheesing your way through the grappling sections with your high jump. Kind of an interesting design trade-off there. Overall, I don't think I like the super high, the super high jump that this game has. Kind of messes with your vision quite a bit. It makes it easy to overlook things on the ceiling. The camera tends to be not far forward enough or too far behind during vertical sections. Let's 
Although it certainly feels really good when you first get it. Put in the Hyper and Hyper Metroid. You even get a Hyper Jump. Also, so far it looks like bosses are following the regular stage order. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, without some kind of dash ball, we can't get through here. Actually, this is a... I don't think we've seen this color turtle before. Eh, it still can't... still can't grapple the sucker. Uh... There must be a way up on the other side. Ooh, or like a way back using Ice Beam, which would be that beam I said that we're overdue for. Okay, it seems like combat in this game really encourages missile use, and enemies seem to almost always drop missiles anyways when you need them, so fuck it. We'll just go to town with the missiles. We're going to Missile Town. Ding, 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 won't you take me to ding, 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 Missile Town? Okay, that's the, that's the bad lava. People call it acid, I guess. So it's like the various suit, suit gets you through lava, but not acid, which seems kind of backwards to me. I don't know. I would think that fiery hot magma would be more dangerous than acid, but what do I know? I mean, missiles get the job done, I guess. I feel like I'm not supposed to be here, but fuck it. Actually, I think Super Metroid sometimes forced you to take acid baths to... Oh, I accidentally did the backdash move, but that's right. That's probably what we're supposed to do here. Yeah, that's the ticket. Well, no new power-ups in Norfair just yet, but we sure got a lot of those Turian switches. There it is. I knew it. Oh, and look how look at how much more powerful that is. And it's not like the Super Metroid Ice Beam where it's like you want to turn it off so that you uh, save time killing the enemies. It's like, oh no, we get so much extra power out of this sucker. It would actually take more shots to kill enemies if we turned it off. Okay, this is going badly. Now we've made some progress. I really, really want to make sure we get a save point. Okay, here it is. We're making progress again, finally. Good grief. I've made more progress in this game in like the last 20 minutes than I had in the hour and a half prior to that. Oh, back to Criteria. Wait, wasn't this the super missile door? 
I don't know if I trust this. Yes, it was the super missile door. Where was our last save point, anyways? It was right back in the direction we're going, anyways. Eh, that's not exactly what we wanted. Minor nitpick, because, you know, that's what I do. The ice beam effect is a little underwhelming. Like, the wave beam upgrade completely changed the behavior of your shot, but... Ice beam is just the wave beam, only it's blue now. Oh god, my eyes. What is this? It's like I'm swimming in crocomire piss or something. Also, Fantoon has me... That So that Fantoon fight, that was the first major boss fight we've seen so far, and it wasn't just the original fight copied into a obnoxious arena like the Torizo fight was. Like, they actually changed it a bit. It wasn't terribly complicated or interesting, but they changed it. So that has me a bit curious about what's coming up for the boss fights after it, if not necessarily hopeful. Oh yeah, so does Ice Beam get us anything anywhere else? I think it does. Or no, there was the one room in Brinstar where we, need, we needed to freeze turtles to get up, but there was a... Uh, a super missile door at the top of that turtle room anyways. Nope. 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 Get back here! Ah, eh, fuck it. It doesn't, do, it doesn't do that much damage. And all we get is a missile. Boo. Although missiles aren't quite as worthless in this hack as they were in the original Super Metroid. Like, I sure wish I had more missiles for that Fantoon fight. I did not realize that these guys were freezable. Also, it looks like the... No, we do still have water physics down here. I don't know what it is, but this underwater run animation looks very funny to me. I think it's just her regular running animation, only slowed down, but... I don't know, that makes it funny.
You know what would be a, uh... A funny twist would be just surprise Ridley out of nowhere. Change the boss order up even more. Oh, hey there, Leto War. Am I a pro at Super Met Metroid? Um, I'll let you be the judge of that, but, uh... Yeah, spoiler alert, no, not whatsoever. I attempted to do a, uh... A speedrun of Super Metroid earlier this year, where a speedrun for me is clear the game in less than three hours to get the good ending where you see Bikini Samus, and I mean, I wouldn't say I just barely made it, but yeah, it was like two and a half, it was like a two and a half hour playthrough. Not for a hundred percent or anything, mind you, just two and a half hours to just beat the game. It wasn't exactly a speed run though. Like I do, kn I do know some. It was like halfway between a speed run and a let's play because I still wanted to show off the regular path through the game. So even though I know how to do stuff like skip the grapple be beam and uh, mock ball to skip spore spawn, I didn't do any of that stuff because I wanted to show off Crocomire and spore spawn and all those guys. Okay, why am I in this room? Why do I want to be here? Oh, this actually lets me get back up to where we started. Is there anything back down here? There might be. The biggest dose of uh, Super Metroid... Like, yeah, so yeah, I'm obviously not a part of the Metroid speedrunning or hacking community or anything. I, do, I was just... I'm a casual variety streamer, and uh, this stream, uh, or this hack was recommended to me by a friend of the channel, Sarah Bo, who said this was a really good ROM hack. And yes, it's mostly very good. Actually, it's, it's, it's better than mostly very good. It got off to an extremely strong start, and I got really aggravated in the wrecked ship. And also with a bunch of stuff before that, where I got lost and couldn't figure out where the hell to go. Before that point, though, it was a really, this has been a really good time. And now we're making forward progress again, so yeah. That's like, what, 80% positive? That's how I rate games these days, is what percentage positive rating I think they would get on Steam. Because that's like my only source for game reviews these days, is uh, Steam user reviews. Uh, so that's tantalizing up there, but I seriously doubt that they're going to give us super missiles from some bullshit trickery in this room. Nah. Uh, anyways, my, my main exposure to Metroid Pro strats is from the uh, GDQ events. That's basically the only reference point I have whatsoever for uh, Super Metroid Prodom is uh, the annual GDQ runs. Well, shit. Wait, something just opened there. Oh, that was this door over here. From me firing in this direction. Cool, I'm glad we came back down here. Just to be sure. I was pretty sure there was going to be nothing down here anyways, and that confirmed it. Space pirates sound like parrots when you shoot them. It's kind of weird. They sound like parrots 
They look like praying mantises, and their leader is a giant pterodactyl. Oh, this is a thing. Oh, that platform's gonna reform by the time I get back up here. No, it's not. Uh, shit, we could, we've actually still got a lot more places in Norfair we can check out here. I thought we were just about done here. I thought I was wanting to... Oops. Thought I was wanting to go back to Brinstar and see what we can get out of this ice beam, but... Actually, we still got stuff to do in Norfair. Or not. Or maybe we'll just be stymied by green doors at literally every turn. I swear, I can't, like, turn around without having a, having a green door slammed in my face these days. So this is weird. Ah, there she is. Yeah, they're giving us so much of Norfair to explore right here. I am half expecting Krakemeyer to pop out at any second. Except we've already got Grapple Beam, so he's got to be guarding something else. Maybe Super Missiles? Also, I'm just going to make a prediction just based on the overall vibe I get from this hack. I'm going to predict that Krokomire is going to have a second form where he attacks you in skeleton form. Actually, I know what to do with that. I remember what to do about situations like this. Well then. Well then. It wasn't a green door this time, it was a super missile block. They're finding all sorts of new and creative ways to box me in. And that's it. That's as far as we go in this direction. This is going to kind of annoy me, where at the end of all my talk about how they're giving us all these places to explore in Norfair, it looks like it's just going to be dead ends all over the place. Come back with super missiles. Loser. Glad to waste your time. Eh, I guess we still got whatever's down here. Oh, 
Oh, he didn't get frozen. That's, that's against the rules. Fuck it, I'm going anyways. That's a interesting tube. What do you guys think? Crocomire? There's a save point over there, so I'm guessing Crocomire to the right, save point to the left. Oh, hi there. I was right, except uh, we're fighting him now. Oh, is this it? Just he's green and there's steam coming out from some places. I guess it's hard to change bosses in ROM hacks, so it wouldn't... I guess I can't be too disappointed if this is all there is to it, but... Even for a ROM hack, that's a bit simple. Even considering the difficulties of hacking bosses in a ROM hack, that was pretty disappointing. I'm predicting a second phase. Uh, hey there, Saturn Meteor. Uh, yes, we completed Arcade Hard Mode with Cherry. Uh, I guess... I guess Super Metroid ROM, ROM hacking is harder than, harder than I thought. Doi. Actually, it was... You know what? Now that I think of it, the mid-bosses haven't been changed at all so far. Because, yeah, uh, Spore Spawn was the same. He was just in a different arena. Uh, Torizo was the same, just in a different arena. And now Crocomire was also the same, just in a very, very slightly different arena. Uh, have I been playing for hours and hours without getting super missiles? Yes, I've been playing for, like, four hours total, I think, on this ROM hack, and I have not found super missiles yet. I mean, I've seen super missiles. I've seen super missile packs, but not any that I can actually get to at this point. That felt bad. This is going to be a bad time. Nope, we're fine. Stuck against your will? Yeah, that sucks being stuck in places against your will. I end up in that situ- I used to end up with that in that same kind of situation with my family all the time, but... These days, I don't see them that often anyways, and I don't mind seeing them as much as I used to. Probably for that same reason, that I don't... I'm not stuck visiting, visiting them all the time. Actually, I wonder if we can... there we go. Oh yeah, you've got, like, like yeah, fun stuff like the Switch to keep you occupied. I don't even have such luxuries. I don't play portable consoles. Maybe if I saw my family more often, then I would uh, maybe consider investing in a Switch. But yeah, as it is, I do all my gaming at home anyways. Never been the kind of gamer to play portable systems at home. Gotta play on the big TV or monitor or whatever. It used to be the TV, but now it's the... Now it's the monitor. We're actually kind of... It actually kind of looks like we're slowly making our way towards Ridley. Even if we make it that far, I feel like... Ridley without super missiles is... Just not gonna be worth the trouble. Boo. Boo.
Okay, okay. Sometime the game, sometimes the game expects you to make blind jumps forward. And that's what's needed to progress, and sometimes you take a blind jump forward and it's just into acid. The pitfalls of having a high jump that takes you rocketing four screens into the air. I'll take it. Actually, I don't think we're supposed to be here. Yeah, it's kind of working out so far, though. I don't know. I th I'm thinking space jump. This looks like a space jump room to me. Although I have screwed myself over in the past by giving up too easily. Nope. Uh, tried the beginning of this game? Hmm. Uh, I guess you might be spoiling yourself if you care about uh, finding all the secrets on your own, although... It's not like I'm going to be... F or secrets. Yeah, just finding all the items and the path forward and stuff. I don't think you're going to get spoiled very rapidly watching this playthrough, because it's been very slow going for me so far. I have not been finding stuff very quickly. Like I said, we're like four hours in at this point. And I've just cleared... I've only cleared one major boss, actually. Come on. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Oh, we can get up there with wall jump. Or can we? I'll give it one more shot. Or maybe zero more shots. Speaking of shots, I meant to go to the liquor store today, so I might still do that. Like when we go on break to start up genealogy. Damn it. Oh, my life is slowly being whittled away. Kind of running out of places to go. I don't think we've actually found anything useful here ever since getting that ice beam. Yeah, there's a lot of Norfair left to uncover, too. I wish that it started your map centered on where you are. Also, even though, like I said, we've made no progress, I would still like to grab that save point. Just to maintain all the map squares I've filled in. Fuck, 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 fuckity fuck. Now I don't know if I want to save, because if I save it'll be with 30 energy. Whoa! That would be a terrible death. Oh yeah, I guess we can go right from Crocomire. What's over this way? Hey there, Cerebo. I think you're just about to... W I think you're just in time to watch me suicide into acid. Oh, we can make that. 
It's missiles. It's fucking missiles. Then I'm gonna acid bath on my way back. And finish the job. Like, I think I gotta make a short hop this way. And like this. Oh, you know what? The duration that you hold down the button for. Also, I've closely examined that death animation now, and those are definitely nips on the... on the Samus death sprite. So, yeah. This ROM hack is rated A-O. Anyways, I don't think I'm even gonna risk my life for, uh... <laughs> missiles. We're just gonna move on and grab him the next time we pass through here. Yes, I definitely had a lot more health after killing Krokemeyer. Would have been smarter to do that the first time around, but it's just missiles, so... I'm not too distraught. Did we get anything at all for beating Krokemeyer, though? I guess just progress through Norfair, but there ended up not being anything interesting on the other side of him. Oh no. That's kind of dirty. Oh, that's not the bad lava. That's the okay lava. I need to find some place to farm energy. I could have sworn I saw one of those bug dispensaries not too long ago. It's gonna be a long trek out of Norfair. I kind of wish I'd have just left this awful place the first time I had the chance. Uh, that w those were dead ends up there? No, that's the way forward. Oh yeah, speaking of way forward, I saw that the new Shantae game is out now. I don't know what it is, but for some reason I'm a lot more interested in the new one, Seven Sirens, than I was uh, over the previous one, Half Genie Hero. Like, I'm actually kind of tempted to buy Seven Sirens when I haven't even played Half Genie Hero yet. Supposedly this one returns to the uh, Metroidvania format. Whereas Half Genie Hero was just uh, stage by stage. So that's kind of interesting to me. The art style has been changed up again very slightly, so it's a little bit more appealing to me. Fuck. Now, were these both super missile doors? I'm po they can't have been. Oh, right, it was the super missile block. Am I stuck then? Oh, there must have been a breakable floor. That doesn't show up on the map. I also have poor self-control when it comes to looking up endings and story information about games that I'm interested in. Uh, we're gonna die right away here. Uh, that helps a little bit. Actually, I should probably just farm these guys because it's a long way back to the last save point. Uh, 
I don't know, is 100 energy enough? Also, that kind of amuses me that the energy starts at zero uh, rather than one. Uh, you know what? 115 energy should be fine. Or it would have been. Now we're at less than 115, so now we gotta farm it back up. You're curious about Silk Song, but didn't play Hollow Knight? I would strongly recommend Hollow Knight. I personally think it's one of the best... Not just the best, best Metroidvania of all time, but just one of the best games of all time in general. Actually, is this even... How the fuck do I get out of here? Or unless this door down here was enterable? Nope, that was the super missile door. Like, I don't think I have a way out of this pit without a single wall jump, and even if I do abuse that, it's kind of tricky. And then that's the super missile. How did I get... How did I get down here? No, I must have fallen through the floor up above, so yeah, this is the way. Oh, it's this ugly fucker over here. I didn't even see him. No, then we're just stuck. Yeah, I think we fell through the floor to get down here. That Yes, I bombed through that floor. So there's got to be super missiles down here somewhere, because otherwise there's no way back for me. Which means I gotta backtrack through all the bullshit and go all the way to the left. God, this is miserable. Uh, I found it too tough. Oh yeah, Radiant Radiance is the final boss of Hollow Knight, and it is pretty challenging. More so than any other boss in the regular game. It's really just because he does double damage, like most other... Hollow Knight is actually pretty generous with uh, the amount of mistakes it lets you make in a given boss fight. You have a lot of health, and you can recover your health pretty easily. And then all of a sudden, Radiance, right at the end of the, of the game, does two points of damage instead of one. And it's like, what the fuck? This is twice as hard as anything that's come before. So yeah, it's kind of a stopping point for a lot of people. Mind you, Radiance has uh, pretty severe requirements to even face him in the first place. A lot of people I've seen just call the game done uh, once they beat the Hollow Knight. Like, yeah, I've seen a lot of playthroughs where they just didn't even bother with Radiance and just called it done after Hollow Knight. Okay, maybe there is something going on after Krokomire, and I just missed it. Because, yeah, we didn't get any kind of reward for this fight. Also, yeah, you want to hold the jump button. Or I guess let it go if you want a farther sideways jump. Cool, we got 20 more energy than the last time we took this save. I don't know, this, this ROM hack seems to be ramping up pretty significantly in difficulty. I do not think I would call this like a beginner level ROM hack. It's not exactly expert level, like you don't need glitches or anything, or Super Metroid game knowledge to survive or do well in this game, but it is much, much more challenging than uh, the original Super Metroid. This is an adult ROM hack for serious people.
You can tell, you, you know that because Samus flashes her boobies every time she dies. Fuck. Oh, you can actually get quite a bit of distance on that if you hold the button down. So did we get whatever item it was on the other side of here? I feel like I have to just retraverse all of this shit. It was just a missile pack, right? Yeah, it was just a missile pack. This seems to be just about the only type of enemy in this area, so I think I'm just gonna keep the... keep the grapple beam out here. Ah, uh, never mind. Yeah, I'm just going to assume it's a... Uh... Oh, I never went up here, did I? This is it, isn't it? This is the this is the magic path forward. It's just a random upwards tunnel. But an obvious upwards tunnel that I overlooked. Oh, missiles will do it too. I wonder if we'll find super missiles in here too. What's with these dangling glowy lights? Were those in the original Super Metroid? I don't recognize that graphic. Boo. Okay, that, me that means that super missiles have got to be in this room, right? Right? Oh, just what I wanted. Get back up here, fool. Oh, is that it? They just do it the once? No, there we go. There we go. I don't know why I did that, but it was fun. Oh, suck it to my veins. Okay, cool, we're healthy again. Ah, uh, so there's some regular missiles there. Uh, there's power bomb bullshit. Um, I... that would be real dumb. I don't think they would hide an upgrade inside a collapsible floor block. Also, it would show up as a dot on the map. Then again, this is another fucking dead end. I don't believe this shit. Am I soft locked? I do not see a way for a way back where we came from here. The game dropped me down a pit with no way back the way I came and I I don't know how to get out of here. So, okay, what's with this platform? No, I'm not softlock. I'm just an idiot. Just an idiot. That was an obvious moving platform there that I just missed. Super missiles. Yes! Okay, this opens up quite a lot of stuff for us. Also, do super missiles share ammo with my missiles? 
Oh, they just cost 10 missiles. Uh, we have to be careful with that. That's actually a really cool change. I like that a lot. So that means that my missile upgrades matter now. A lot. Because my super missile capacity shares with my missiles. It also makes them kind of easier to refill as well. That also means I really want... How do I know it costs 10? That's my ammo counter up top. 77 out of 95. Top of the screen, just uh, underneath my missiles. Oh, I guess we need some kind of speed ball to get through there. Like, yeah, that ammo counter goes down by 10 every time I fire a super missile. Actually, yeah, considering how precious ammo is, I might as well refill it here. Boom. Now the question is, do I want to go back over this way? Or there weren't any super missile doors blocking my progress back that way. Honestly, super missiles open up so much for us back up above. But I think I just want to go back above. Oops. Yeah, I kind of figured it would start reversing direction. Hey, it's our first refill station. I could have used one of these a long time ago. It's kind of redundant putting this uh, so close to the bug dispenser up top, but you know, I'll take it. The missiles will be helpful. Oh boy. Actually, that's no problem. Uh, missile stations were always useful, even in the original, for the same reason. They filled up your super missiles. Although, even in Super Metroid, you tend to use the enemy spawners to refill your stuff, just because they're more plentiful, more frequent. Like, rather than waiting for the next missile station, which you don't see missile stations that often, you usually just refill at the bug spawners whenever you need to. Um, every missile station? Yes, probably. Maybe not the one in Turium, because you need full missiles to defeat Mother Brain. But other than that, yes, probably. Actually, for that matter... Uh, what was I gonna say? Bosses actually drop tons of missiles on you, too. So that's another way to refill your missiles. Especially if you don't take any damage during a boss fight, because... Enemies will only drop what you don't have. So if you're at full health when you kill a boss, he will drop tons and tons of missiles on you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna wall jump up there. No way am I not gonna wall jump up there. Hmm. That's actually a little bit tricky. Could freeze the Fanto bouncing around there. Oh, got him. No! Okay, what do we do? I guess just wait for him and freeze him in the center of the screen. That's a little bit better, but I fucked up the jump. Probably nothing good up there anyways, since I'm probably not supposed to go up that way. This isn't gonna work either. You know what, fuck it. I'm obviously not supposed to go this way.
So I guess, so I see enemies are still dropping super missiles. I guess that just gives you 10 missiles or something. So yeah, the red missile drops are worth two. Hmm. Anyways, we're making so much progress here. I'm so... So much forward momentum, so much empty space to fill in on the map. We're actually playing this one a lot longer today than I was planning to. Maybe we could just go Hyper Metroid all night? We'll see how I feel in, like, another hour or so. Uh, was it hard to find the grapple? I don't remember how I found the... Gr oh, yes, the grapple was hard to find. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's in a very trippy... It's in a very tricky room, where at first glance, it's like the last room you would expect the grapple to be in. Oh, those things are coming out of that dispenser there. It's actually... I was kind of impressed by the way the grapple beam was hidden. Some could argue that it's maybe bad design because of the way that it kind of wards you away from the room that it's in. Um, oh, this might be a boss fight. Ooh, Golden Torizo? Really? Okay, so he's like moving double speed. Oh, yeah, he does that still. I don't think I'm supposed to be here yet. That seems unreasonably difficult. Not that I was trying especially hard. I guess we can try it again, although I'm going to need to farm some energy. Is this game opening up all of a sudden? Because there's tons of stuff I could do back up on the surface with these super missiles. You can actually rapid fire these missiles pretty awesomely. But yeah, we're, we definitely either need more health or... Uh, yeah, just more health, or some better way to do damage. Um, I don't remember where Charge Beam is hidden. Maybe by Spore Spawn? No, it was before Spore Spawn. I don't remember where the Charge Beam was, but it wasn't especially well hidden. I think you might... So far, the order of power-ups in this game seems fairly linear. Although it could be that I was just missing ways to get things earlier. Like, I, I'm pretty sure you need Grapple Beam to get Charge Shot. Although I could be misremembering that. God, Norfair is fucking huge. I'm still here. It's been like two hours and I'm still here. Oh, glory be. Oh, I think this is... Yeah, this is the one we've been in before. Okay, so this is where I wanted to go. Back to Brinstar, and we can actually open up some of these super missile doors now. Particularly... The one with the... Turtle shaft. That we can go up now. Uh, doesn't the... The golden Torizo? He dodges... Or he dodges. He grabs super missiles out of the air, but regular missiles work just fine. Okay, cool. We opened up this shortcut. First step on our long journey. I feel like we're cracking this place wide open already. 
Also, God, these guys die even easier now that we got freeze shot. But yeah, for me, the big sticking point... It could have been Grapple Beam, to be honest. I was lucky to have found Grapple Beam. I just experimented with something stupid in a particular room, and it happened to work out for me. The big sticking point for me was Varia Suit, which I actually thought was kind of unreasonable. The way to get to that. Does it increase the ammo of 10 missiles to get a super missile upgrade? Does it increase the ammo of 10 missiles to get a super missile upgrade? Sorry, I don't know what that means. Okay, there was a green door at the top of this shaft, if I remember right. Damn it! I was looking at chat. We'll do the turtle shaft and then... Then we'll look at chat. You must climb a turtle shaft. You must climb a turtle shaft. Boom! Uh, missile upgrade is 5 missile ammo capacity. Yes, that's right. Um, I actually haven't seen any super missile upgrade packs yet. We saw the one upgrade that gives you super missiles, but I didn't see if it upgraded my capacity at all. Like, if super missiles and regular missiles share ammo in this hack... And then I wouldn't see any reason for there to be more than one super missile upgrade. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. I'll see what happens the next time I find a super missile upgrade, if there even exists anymore out there. <laughs> I like that effect, the way, the way these platforms look when they hide the sides of them like that. It's cute. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm stuck. There we go. I could not unmorph there. And I can't unmorph here either. This is weird. So yeah, I just can't... Just arbitrarily, I can't unmorph from Morph Ball sometimes after traveling up those little elevator shafts. That seems... unintended. Um, I guess I gotta leave to reset the elevators. All other upgrades will be regular missile ones? Like... Yes, because missile capacity and super missile capacity aren't... Like, they're, this, they're the same thing in this hack, so there's not really any reason for there to be two different types of upgrades. Like, the original Super Metroid, there were two separate ammo counters. You had your missile count and your super missile count, so you needed super missile upgrades dotted throughout the map in order to carry more super missiles. That's no longer the case in this ROM hack, so... Yeah, I can't... Maybe this is intentional. I think I'm actually supposed to do this. Yeah, I don't know what was going on there, but I think I was meant to go across there. With bomb jumps, except I don't know why... what in-game logic there is for disabling my morph... my unmorph capability. Also, this whole passageway here doesn't even lead to where I thought it would. <laughs> I thought that we were going, like, up and over to the left to hit that switch. Oh boy. Grappling beam nonsense over water. My favorite.
Fuck. Fuck. There's too much underwater bullshit. There is too much gravity suitless underwater bullshit. Oh god, in this ROM hack. I'm putting my foot down. Okay, so I'm not even supposed to make that jump up there. Hopefully this is good enough. Yeah. Eh, good enough. Oh hey, there's a super missile right there. Except I'm terrified that I'm gonna have to walk back to the start of the room underwater if I go for it. So, fuck it. Um, do I want to answer that? I'm not expecting anyone. Forget it. Actually, it could be my mom. They might have texted me and I didn't... Look at my phone, just a second. Actually, my parents did text me, like, half an hour ago, but, uh, that's not them outside. It was for something different. Oh, uh, right, this idiot. Uh, so he's kind of got himself stuck here. Which is kind of pathetic, pathetically hilarious. We'll see.
<laughs> uh, sorry about that, guys, if uh, any of you guys are still here. It looks like you largely aren't. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I was, that was just a friend of mine, like a personal friend of mine, actually, just random, randomly dropped by to say hi, and we got to talking a bit. And I, I hadn't seen him in a while since the uh, quarantine and lockdown and stuff, so... Yeah, we uh, chatted for a while. I've actually got some tea on as well. And actually, now's just a good time for a bathroom break. So yeah, we'll just stay on break and I'll be back in like another two minutes. Okay. A apologies for the uh, yeah extended break yet again, which I extended even more by uh, pissing for a very long time. Uh, 
yeah, that was just kind of cool. I hadn't seen that guy in a while. We used to, he's one of my tabletop gaming buddies. I used to see him like twice a week, three times a week. He was part of my Friday night board game group and my L5R group and my Monday D&D. &D. And uh, all of those shut down after the uh, COVID quarantine nonsense. So I haven't seen him since then. <laughs> Uh, he brought me a pizza, which was really, really nice of him, so I'm gonna scarf this down on stream now. Oh, this is like an all-meat, too? Nice. Mm. Such a cool, thoughtful guy, I feel. <laughs> I, I feel... I feel bad. Having such a cool, thoughtful friend and not being able to reciprocate in kind. This pizza was a thoughtful little, uh... Thoughtful little thing to give me, just to stop by and visit. And I'm bad at doing thoughtful little things like that and reciprocating those kinds of gestures. Oh, hey, uh, this... This guy's well-armored. Uh, so if we know, there's nothing over here. Anyways, at this point... Wow, that was a much longer... I didn't realize I was away for so long. At this point, I think it's maybe... Yeah, it's pretty pretty likely that we're not going to get around to Fire Emblem 4 tonight. So I think I'll just do Hyper Metroid for another, say, couple hours. I don't know, maybe if I get bored of it or something, we'll play something else, but uh, I've actually got a couple games sort of lined up that I'd like to do brief little showcases of. I don't know if we're going to do them tonight, but I'm kind of planning on it. Uh, Magical Drop 3 is one of them. That's like one of my favorite action puzzle games, if not my absolute favorite. And I can't actually remember the other one. Um, am I going to try hard for the S ranks on hard? I don't think I am. I'm not really an S rank kind of guy. I think I'm going to go for the 1cc on hardest difficulty, because that sounds like it'll be fun. Actually, before the stream, um, I was doing a little bit of messing around in Streets of Rage and trying out uh, just some of the individual levels on hardest difficulty. And I beat stage 6. I actually beat stage 6 on my first try, so now I'm on to being stuck on stage 7 now, which is super exciting. So, have you have you seen stage 7 on hardest difficulty? Saturn Meteor, do you know do you know what happens on hardest difficulty in stage 7? Stage 7 is the train level. Uh, you fight Estelle, the police lady for a second time. She's the boss of that stage. And what happens with the Estelle, the second Estelle boss fight on hardest difficulty is you've got a second commissioner to deal with. So yeah, when she goes into desperation mode, she summons two commissioners to help her out instead of the one. And it's kind of bullshit, and I haven't been able to beat it yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It would, it would be the same on Mania as well. Yeah. Two commissioners, maybe even three? That would be excessive, right? There's no way it would be three commissioners on Mania. Actually, I guess I can save here. Or can I? I actually don't know if I can get back up from here. Fuck. Ah, 
Oh no, we're good. We're good. Yeah, I think the single nastiest thing that hardest and mania difficulty do to you in Streets of Rage 4 is just adding like one extra of the tough enemies. Like you fight two Big Bens instead of one, and you fight two Commissioners instead of one, and two Metal Skull Robots. And that's kind of a massive step up in difficulty. Like, it's a whole new dynamic, fighting two of a difficult enemy, uh, compared to fighting just one. I'm actually surprised this guy's even vulnerable to regular shot. That guy doesn't even do that much damage. Also, I don't even know where I'm going. Oh, we do want to go down there. There's a dot. Oh, also, this is kind of a weird little face. There's the eye up here and the nose in front. Does that signify anything? Might just be a coincidence. It's a bit, uh... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A bit suspect? A bit like maybe I'm just seeing things? Hmm. 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 Oh, and that- no, that's a green missile door. Uh, yeah, five capacity for the missiles. At least I assume so. I didn't look for it, but... Missile upgrades have always been five capacity up till now. I think I was at 95 before. I guess I'm having a second supper tonight. <laughs> eh, it's only a small pizza. It's a nice little snack. I won't have to go to the shoppers for a snack run later tonight. Although, actually, I might need to go for a soda refill. Yeah, I've gotten back in the habit, back in the bad habit of uh, drinking sodas every other day. Although it's only the mini cans. I like the mini cans. The problem I have with soda is that none of the sizes really work for me. Like the bottle is too large and the mini bottle is too small and you can't buy individual cans anymore. And they're always out of stock of the sodas I like in the 12 packs. So it's like, what the fuck do I do? Have I been in here before? No, I haven't. Yeah, I think I'm meant to have freeze beam going through here. So it looks like we're still in sequence as far as I can tell. That's my T beeping right there. I'll grab that in a moment. Ooh, that lined up nicely. I think we're closing in on Kraid? This'll be interesting. 
Oh, are we going to learn to Shine Spark here? No, we don't even have Speed Booster yet. Although, maybe we get it after Kraid? I just had an awful... Awful idea that I hope they don't do, but... Underwater Kraid could be a thing. Oh, we, there's a thing up there. Oh, I see, I see. Is there any reason we want to help him out like that? Well, I'm stuck down here now. Also, with this water... Uh, the, my shots now look kind of green. Kind of the way they looked originally before I got the ice beam. What the hell kind of block is that? Oh wait, oh that's how we gotta do it. This might be more trouble than it's worth. I think we'll come back. After we get the gravity suit. Uh, this puzzle room seems like it's more trouble than it's worth. Oh, but that's the way to Kraid. We've got to do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a dietitian or anything, but uh, my understanding is that, yeah, sugar in general, and soda in particular, is now understood to be, like, a lot worse for you than was previously known. Whoa. Wait, that doesn't actually shut off, shut off the lights when you hit those, does it? Also, what the hell's going on here? I just went through a new door. Oh, I see. Um, I don't think I want to do this yet. Okay, so we want that top door. Oh, is this like where I've got to go all the way around and outside and back through the top? Every time I fail this? That sounds miserable. Who would do that to a player? Actually, it's it's not that it's actually not that difficult to get back up here. Keep bumping my microphone. Going in for the pizza. There we go. Okay. Okay. What does that do? Okay, so we can let him loose along a little thing there. Or do we need him to shine spark for something for me? This is weird. I don't know what's going on. I don't see any reason to close that. Or unless it opens up something up top, let's give that a try. It does not. Mm. I've got a lot of bad habits, if I'm honest. I, <laughs> I snack constantly and I tend to binge. 
like basically every day. Unless I'm streaming. Streaming actually helps me out because it keeps me kind of occupied. But otherwise, I'm just, yeah, sitting on my chair. Eating, like, ruffles or whatever shit every evening. Like a full bag, too. Like a full bag a day, along with a, a small soda can. But it's a sm only a small soda can, so I justify it to myself that that makes it okay. Yeah, I don't think we can do this, whatever it is. Okay, so we can put that bridge down. You gotta be kidding me. Do we need gravity suit to... ...do this shit? Okay, if we're stuck here, then I don't know what to do next. The door down on the bottom right was a gray door, not a super missile door. We still got a switch on the far left that I don't know how to hit. There was actually still a bunch of stuff in Norfair that we haven't done yet. Like, yeah, it looks like I need Gravity Suit to jump up there. I suppose we've got no shortage of green doors that we can investigate at this stage. I don't know, I'm personally a bit sympathetic when it comes to diet issues and people, you know, having trouble avoiding bad foods. Hey, more energy. Like, I, I feel like the only reason I haven't ballooned out of control is uh, just good genetics or good metabolism or something. For as much garbage as I eat, I deserve to be, like, 250 pounds, but I actually, maybe I am at this point. No, I'm definitely not, but uh, I haven't weighed myself in ages. Man, it's so far. So much distance to cover to get back down, though. So all we have are super missiles. Super missiles is the only, or ice beam as well. We also have ice beam. I also have tea, which I uh, for forgot to grab a minute ago. I guess I should pause the game when I go up to grab stuff like that, just in, case, just in case there's a stray enemy wandering around or something. Blah. Oh hey, nice grab there. Yeah, I think we're just going to mosey on back to Criteria and see what other green doors we can hit along the way.
Hey, we're at 100 uh, missiles now, which is a nice round number. Yeah, I never really... I guess part of the reason why every diet slash exercise plan that I've ever attempted has ended in failure, because I don't really keep track of that stuff. I just kind of go go with my... go with my gut, as it were, and just kind of like half-ass and approximate stuff. So it's like, okay, this seems like about as much exercise as I can do, so I'll just do that. So yeah, I don't bother with, like, uh, goals or uh, measuring progress or anything like that, which it turns out is a pretty bad system for seeing any kind of improvement when it comes to anything. Uh, where are we going? Can we not get down to Criteria from here? No, there must be... Oh, right, this bit right here, I forgot. There we go. This is actually good pizza. I usually get the thin crust at Panago, because I don't like too much bread on my pizza. No health reasons for that whatsoever. They say bread is bad for you, but I just do it because I don't like too much crust, so I go for thin crust. This is good crust, though. I didn't realize Panago's standard crust was so tasty. I'm actually not seeing a lot of... Uh, super missile doors here, blocking off my progress. Do we just go back to Norfair? I think I've got no better leads here than to just go all the way back to Norfair. Well, we'll take the alternate entrance into Norfair just because... You know, we've got super missiles now, and so we can take that entrance. Do we have anything else right now? Right, yeah, ice beam, but that doesn't help us at all. Check this out. 35% completion. Now I wonder... Is that just for my equipment? Or is that overall completion, like including missile pickups and stuff? Because if that's just, like, suit completion for your main powers that you need to complete the game... Like, we are on pace for a... 15-hour playthrough, which seems like a lot for a Super Metroid game. Am I even going the right way here? It would have been faster to go left, but we're here already.
How are we doing for Torian switches anyways? I can actually check that. Uh, while we're going this way. I think we hit like two or three of them. That puts us... Actually, that does put us at about 35% completion. We will have five out of 15 switches if I've got my count right. Oh, you know, I never made this connection, but yeah, this is the music from the statue room. So yeah, this is effectively the equivalent of the statue room. We need to hit switches instead of kill bosses to open the way to Turian here. And sure enough, one, two, three, four, five switches. Okay, so you need high jump boots to get up to that door. I think it was a red door, so you need missiles to get through it. And then you need super missiles to get through this one. I'm guessing it's going to be a yellow door blocking me in this room. Yep, there it is. Oh, there's an item through this one. Oh, actually, I never even bothered to check this. We've got a full map of Turian. Also, we will need Gravity Suit to uh, make that jump up there. Um... So, in terms of the story, like your goal in Super Metroid is to retrieve the Metroid larva, as it tells you every time you get a game over, which basically means hunt down the leader of the space pirates, which is Mother Brain, who you eventually learn is still alive and shit. And you know from Samus's excursions through the planet... What's this place called again? SR something or other? Or is that Zebes? Was Zebes the planet from the original Metroid? Anyways, we know that Mother Brain is situated in Turian, and you know that Turian has these four creepy-looking statues at its front door. So you can kind of surmise from there that those are statues of the four big bosses you need to kill in order to open the door to Torian. And each of the, sta the statues has like a glowing eyeball of a different color. So each time you defeat a boss, one of those eye crystals gets taken out from the statue of its respected respective boss. So the game gives you not so subtle clues that yes, go kill the four bosses to open the door to Torian. Uh, this game does a similar kind of thing, where we've got a full map of Torian. We can't see it anymore, but we saw it earlier. Where it just shows you the map of how to get to the final boss. It's just the way is blocked by these... Uh, 15 doors. And yeah, we know from hitting the other switches that the switches open the door to Torian, because every time you hit a Torian door switch, it says, This is a Torian door switch. Four of 15 or whatever. Fusion didn't really have an overarching goal because fusion was guided. Like your goal in fusion 
is to just do whatever the computer tells you to. And then once you finish that, do the next thing that the computer tells you to, which is kind of part of the reason why a lot of people don't like fusion. Where am I? Yeah, I guess we just clear out the rest of Norfair. Uh, Metroid and Space Pirates aren't linked. Like Metroid, like the species Metroid. Like, Space Pirates are linked to the game Metroid because Space, space Pirates are like the villains of the Metroid series. Uh, the Space Pirates are like doing evil science on Metroids for evil. Uh, so you've got to stop them. Because, yeah, the, Me the Metroids are super dangerous, and you can't let evil space pirates uh, have their way with them. And that's basically the plot of the game. It's kind of unclear to me what the relationship is between the space pirates and Ridley and Mother Brain. Like, as far as who's in charge... And why is there a leader? A brain in a, j in a jar? Or if it isn't, then why is there a leader? A giant space pterodactyl? Meh. I guess we could do that shit off to the far- Honestly, Golden Torizo is probably our best bet at this point. We have two more energy tanks since the last time we attempted it, so that helps us quite a bit. I think I'm gonna go for it. Oh, and uh, the parasite was fusion. Slowly making my way through chat messages here. Ah, uh, so that's rude. I need to approach that from the other side then. Uh, yeah, the X-Parasite was from the Fusion game. Also, since we got a Golden Torizo fight coming up here, we need to be careful to conserve health. Yeah, apparently there is some... Inspiration from the Alien series in this game. I don't really see it myself. I guess other than the creepy atmosphere, but uh, yeah, supposedly, yeah, Alien was a major influence for the developers of this game. I kind of went the wrong way here, but I think it'll still work out all right. Uh, that was part of this... Yeah, that was that was a major part of the story of Alien. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, kind of. Uh, space pirates, I think, are more overtly evil. I don't know. Actually, I don't know what the Space Pirates' goals or motivations are. I think they just want to use Metroids to dominate the galaxy or something. I don't know. Wayland yutani wasn't, uh, wasn't run by a giant space pterodactyl, so I think that just makes them less evil by default. Oh, hey, there's something behind this door that we haven't seen yet. That's kind of exciting. And we've beat Krokemeyer already, so we've got no more mid-bosses to worry about. Also, it doesn't look like we're supposed to go up here yet. Balls. Yeah, we need either Gravity Suit... 
to do a Shine Spark and Speed Booster, I guess, because we still don't have that. Or we need Space Jump. Or I just need to Wall Jump better. Eh, that's not going to do it. Uh, fusion, yes, Fusion is the one where you've got to clear out the X-Parasite infestation from the space station. And then you eventually find out that the scientists in the space station were doing evil science for the Federation to breed the X-Parasites as weapons or something. To no one's surprise. Uh, the moment you find Speed Booster in here... No, the short spine, Shine Spark? Uh, yes, I do. I do know about the uh, short charge Shine Spark. Oh, I keep forgetting you can't go up that way. Fuck, although we can go up through the left. Because we now have Super Missiles. I would guess that this hack has various and sundry uses for the various uh, Metroid speedrunning techniques, because that's just kind of, you know, how the Metroid ROM hacking community goes. That's just what they're into, you know. It's part of the appeal of Super Metroid, especially for the people who get deep into the game and keep on playing it for decades at this point, Jesus, is, yeah, you're all about doing mock balls and short charge, shine sparks, and didn't I clear this already? You're kidding me. I've got to clear that super block every single time? That's bullshit. Nope. Maybe? It actually wouldn't be too difficult to just dive to the bottom of the acid there and see what's there. Oh, I missed this door last time. Just watch. This will be the door. This is the magic door right here. Uh, this looks like a good place to get up some speed. Or some kind of speed booster. It's going to be power, power bombs, isn't it? Interesting. Power bombs. Okay, so we know where the power bombs are once we find the speed booster. Oh, any of that in this hack? Any uh, opportunities to use Super Metroid speedrunning tricks? Uh, stuff like uh, like short charge, sp shine sparks, and uh, mock balls, and that kind of thing. I've actually seen a couple good opportunities for mock balls, but I haven't been able to pull it off. At least not in the rooms where it would be useful. I did manage to pull off a mock ball on a nice long, uh, nice long flat tunnel, and it looked it looks really cool with the new morph ball animation. Where you can see the blue helmet rolling along there. So yeah, glad to see you here, Cerebo. I'm also kind of glad to have not seen you here earlier in the stream. I was mad earlier on. So it's, I don't know. I don't know if I sequence broke or if this was the actual progression. Like the actual way I was supposed to progress through the game, but I did not have a good time in the wrecked ship. I thought there was way too much underwater travel without the gravity suit, which is not a fun thing to do in Metroid games. I thought the grappling hook, uh, the grapple beam puzzles were a giant pain in the ass, and having to backtrack through water every time was stupid and miserable. I hated the blind long jumps I had to do to get into the wrecked ship. It was... Man, I was close to just dropping this playthrough at, at that point. 
Things have improved significantly since then. But, uh, yeah, it was, uh... And all of that happened, like, right after me just wandering around for, like, an hour. Just checking every single wall with x-ray beam, not knowing where to go next. And then the solution ended up being blind long jump over water into the wrecked ship. Oh, wait, uh... Yeah, that doesn't lead anywhere useful. I don't know. It's just gotta be Golden Torizo. It's just gotta be Golden Torizo, man. It's the only obvious thing we can do right now. Yeah, I can, I can Spore Spawn skip in uh, the original Super Metroid. It takes quite a bit of practice, but uh, I think anyone can do it. It's not a super difficult trick. It takes some effort. It took me like 20 minutes to get it down the first time I started practicing it, and it still usually takes me like four or five tries when I try to do it when playing Super Metroid, but even failing Mach Ball four or five times is way faster than fighting Spore Spawn. Uh, Shine Spark into the wrecked ship. I have done that as well. That one requires the short charge where you tap the B button to mess with the animation cycle. GT is really... Oh, Golden Torizo? Uh... It is really hard. Do I want to know if it's progression? Uh, do you think we'll, do you think you'll be around for a little while? Because I probably will want to know if I end up giving up on this. I'm gonna throw my face into um like maybe for half an hour or so, and then if I f still fail after that, then I'll probably want to know. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I can know now, since I've kind of staked out how much I'm going to try. Yeah, whether he's part of the current progression or not, I'm doing it anyways. So yeah, you can just let me know if this is not the thing to do right now. The thing is, is he didn't seem that much tougher than Fantoon, who was also unreasonably difficult, I thought, for the resources I had on hand the first time I fought him. And I guess we have found something else to do right now. If both of these doors lead to dead ends, then we'll fight GT. Well, that... This end looks pretty dead. Like, what's even gonna... Oh, fuck off. Oh, wait, no, this is this is good lava. We don't give a shit about this lava. Oh, we do in as much as it's, it counts as water, so it's gonna fuck with our movement. I need some kind of speed ball to do this, though. So that is two dead ends. So actually, the place I got stuck in, it looked like we were ready to fight Kraid. I had super missiles and everything. There's a weird room with like a, a to like a switch that toggles a gate, and then the I forget his name, the ostrich alien that teaches you shine spark was running around. 
And it looked like some kind of puzzle room, but I couldn't figure out the way forward, so I gave up on it. Dachora, that's the one. Anyways, we're gonna go- we're gonna fight GT. Just maybe I won't waste half an hour doing it. Actually, we wanna- we wanna farm these guys. Honestly, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fight this guy. If this takes actual skill, then I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Because my strategy for the last two attempts at this fight were uh, just basically crouch in front of him and spam missiles. I don't have a better battle plan than that. Yeah, Golden Torizo is actually crazy in this game. He's... Oh, that's not Golden Torizo. Maybe I just go back here anyways? This looks pretty well cleaned out to me, though. I don't see anything else I can do. I'm gonna go fight him. I'm gonna see if we can get anything out of it. Right now, that empty hallway off to the left looks the most interesting to me. If this doesn't work out down here. I'm gonna try and see if I can find some way in there. Oh, that's right. We need to go way down and uh, over to that save point. Oh, right. This, yeah. I forgot the secret tunnel. Like, we're already a lot better off than the last time I tried this. I'm up, like, three energy tanks and something like 30 missiles. And super missiles too? No, I had I needed super missiles to get here. Yeah, I don't know how to dodge the hand wavy laser bullshit. Although he is dropping health. Or is this one weak to power bombs? Okay, he's... we're in a bad spot here. Uh, he's not really changing color. I don't think we've got this. Eh, that's a bit tricky. Also, confirmed nips on the, uh... Samus death animation. I freeze-framed that shit earlier on. This game has an AO rating. Actually, I think you can get away with an M, even with full nudity. I think there are reserve tanks in the hack. There's space for them on the, uh, on the equipment loadout screen, at least. Were we even close there? I didn't even see that guy begin to change color. Blech. Is it just me or do I get better drops out of those projectiles when I use missiles to destroy them? Yeah, this is going poorly. Also, he's not spitting. I need him to spit. Oh, I don't even need to jump to hit him. 
Yeah, I would have liked some health there. Item half or 75% down. If I had him 75, that, that second attempt was worse than the first, but... And yes, single shot uh, red doors are great. Oh, he was at 75% health. In that case, we probably need to move on from this. What if we just do the old Garbo big brain strats right here? It's re really, we don't even have a strategy here. We just like hope and pray that he drops some uh, health for us. Which he is not on this run. Actually, this is going way better <laughs> than the last two attempts. <laughs> He's not dropping health for us, though. It's because I'm using so many missiles. If I had more missiles... He's actually changing color a little bit. That went way better that time. The problem is, yeah, with the missile spam, he's gonna drop missiles instead of health off the, uh... Once he starts spitting his balls out. What if we do charge shots? That's probably much, much worse. Also, yeah, we're really not that much better off. This is horrible. Oh, the actual rings that he shoots out don't damage you. Actually, if we keep our distance, does he just keep spamming the balls? Eh, yeah, that, that's not the... That's not the way. We do get more health drops, but we don't deal the damage. I don't know shit about Golden Torizo, so maybe I'll just try and see if he's... weak to bombs, like his little brother. Oops. Okay, that did not look promising. Really not looking promising. Yeah, the that does not damage him. Oh, hey, super missiles actually uh, damage him. I forgot how long that missile tossing animation is. You can actually just pelt him with more supers while he's grabbing it. Maybe that's how we do it? Just go crazy with the super missiles? And then just run screaming from him and hope that he spits at us? What's the math on supers versus regular missiles? I think a I think a super is worth something like 10 missiles. Like that's just overnight except we're only getting half that many shots. Also, yeah. Only getting half that many shots cuz he's uh grabbing half of them. Oh, hey, those supers actually damage me quite a bit. Eh, uh, that seemed less close. 
Yeah, that's cool. We'll catch you later, Saturn Meteor. Also, what's with the plus, plus, minus, minus on the game over screen? If you turn your head sideways, it almost looks like one of them Japanese emojis. Except then it's backwards, because then you got plus signs for eyes on the continue one. Where it looks like she's dead or something. Yes, yeah, missile spam to the face seemed like the best strategy here. Strategy, quote unquote. Yeah, I don't know how to prevent him from just walking into you. This is like the most overpowered boss strat in video game history, where the boss just walks the fuck into you, and you have no recourse. First Mega Man, first clone Mega Man did it to us in Mega Man 1, and now this asshole. Yeah, look at that. If you look at it sideways, the left one is like a... And I guess if you go sideways, turning your head to the left, the left one is like a normal face with like normal eyes, like emoji eyes, like emoji from the uh, uh, the Watamote manga. And then the right-hand one is like a dead face with like X's for eyes, only the X's are turned sideways. Also, they're both smiling for some reason. Also, what are we even going to get that makes this fight easier? <laughs> because, like, what? We come back later and we have power bombs and, like, 30 more missiles? Maybe, like, four or five more energy tanks? We'll have Gravity Suit. We'll have Gravity Suit, which will give us, effectively, twice as much health. So we can actually just, uh, missile spam our way through. Actually, yeah, a beam that can actually damage him would also be helpful. We'll have more health, another beam or two. Did you, did you just accidentally spoil for me that we're not going to have Gravity Suit? <laughs> I, I, I'm kidding. That's not a real spoiler, even if that is true. But That's going to be miserable, because that was like my number one thing. It's like, oh yeah, we're going to have Gravity Suit. <laughs> He'll be no problem once we get that. Uh, so I guess we're back to Brin Star then. Yeah, we'll poke at those left hand walls, trying to get to that switch over there, and then I guess we'll poke at the right hand walls, and then we could also do wrecked ship. We could do wrecked ship and or Meridia again, I guess. That would actually be just the thing, because last time I got stuck in Brinstar, the solution was Wrecked Ship, even though Wrecked Ship looked like a bunch of underwater bullshit that I wanted- that I didn't want to fuck around with. Because yeah, we've gone over all of this stuff over here with a fine-tooth comb. There's nothing that super missiles are going to do for us here. So yeah, I think I did get real close to Kraid, but we got stuck. It seemed... What did I think that I needed? It seemed like we needed Gravity Suit, actually, because there was a bunch of water in the way. Or Speedball, I think, which I'm assuming... Or which I'm guessing is a thing that is going to be a upgrade in this game, because there's so many little tunnels with breakaway blocks. 
that I don't know what's gonna get us through those other than some kind of speed booster ball. Unless the speed booster upgrade, like, gives you some kind of dash ball, the same way that high jump gives you spring ball in zero mission. Am I even going the right way? I think we gotta go all the way up and around. Oh no, we've got super missiles now. Yeah, we can do this. Or can we? What did this used to be? Oh, I think this is our high jump boots, maybe. No, it was super missiles. No, it was missiles. I have no idea. Goldfish memory. I mean, really, fighting Kraid would make the most sense. It seems like almost every major power-up in the game so far has been preceded by a boss or mini-boss of some kind. Like, uh... I guess Grappling Beam and X-Ray Scope would have been exceptions there. Actually, no, about half of our abilities weren't associated with any type of boss. Also, why don't I have that room up and to the left filled in? Wait, did I not x-ray scope the uh, Decora room or whatever? Oh, that's why we don't have that door open, because it's another bullshit shortcut that requires a weapon I don't have yet. Oops. Man, I'm fucking this up horribly here. Kind of annoys me, the way that you can't shoot things that are out of your field of vision. At least as far as I can tell. Either that or your shot just has a shorter range than I thought. It seems like it can't shoot things that you can't see. But maybe that's not exactly how it works. Actually, that's not how we want to do this. There it is. Okay, so this was the puzzle room here. So we can let this guy out. We can bomb this and extend the bridge. What if we do... That... That's tricky, too, because I couldn't x-ray scope that. Whoops, shit, fuck. This is the reason I didn't want to fuck around with this room, because every time you fall below, you've got to go all the way around. Or do you? It looks like you do. Nah, we gotta go all the way around. Whatever, keep the hits coming. Oh. Eh, whatever. I'm not going to... Like I said, I've got my, I had my pizza snack. I'm not going to the store tonight anyways. Trick with the Morph Bomb. Actually, let me just see if I can figure that out, because I know... I know I've done a thing, whoops, I, I've done a thing before. Where I, I did it by accident, I couldn't figure out how to replicate it. Yeah, that thing. 
Okay, so all you gotta do is bomb, unmorph, and hold in the direction you wanna go. I did that by accident earlier, but I couldn't figure out how to do it consistently. That's kind of the trick. Is that not the trick? What if I do it without unmorphing then? Because, yeah, I need to stay morphed. Yeah, it looks like you don't get any horizontal momentum. And this is an, an annoying place to experiment with it, so I think I'll try and get back up top. Try to find a place to more safely experiment with it. That's something. Okay, that was almost something. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. Just bomb tap. Nope! Well, back around I go. Also, I mean, that's kind of stupid. There's no way that's the intended way forward, right? Like, that's just obnoxiously finicky. I'm getting flashbacks to the, uh... To the entrance to the wrecked ship again, where it's like, wait, a blind trial and error jump where it's like you gotta jump miles forward and you can't see where you're going? There's no way, there's no way this is the intended path forward, and as far as I can tell, it might have been. Ah, we'll try it again. This, this is an obnoxious thing that this hack does way too much, in my opinion, is the rooms where you've got to do, like, some grappling beam obstacle or some jumping bullshit above, and if you fail, you fall into the water and have to loop around and do the whole room again. And it's always underwater. I've kind of figured this out. The reason it always has to be underwater is because of the ridiculous height of the high jump boots you get in this game. If they didn't stick water everywhere, you could just cheat your way past every uh, grappling and jumping puzzle that the game has in store for you. So they had to put all of these rooms underwater to force the player to grapple and jump their way through properly. Okay, so normally it just sends you flying over automatically, but in this case, after you hit the ceiling, you need to continue holding the button, it looks like, to continue your momentum forward. I'm gonna try the normal bomb hops, because that seems more intuitively obvious. Although I tried that the first time and it didn't work at all. Maybe I wanted him to go forward a bit more. Ah, uh, well. Also, I'm kind of curious to see what this bird is going to do once we get him to the end. Okay, we can do it that way. Nope, no we can't. Unless it needs to be, like, pixel perfect. This is horrible. Like, there is no defending this. There's gotta be some way to the top without looping all around. Although, why do they give you the door, then? Maybe wait for the water to get all the way down? Nope. Uh, freezing the fish? That's a good suggestion, Jadis. Let's have a look. Get him over here. Uh, 
This might actually work. You might actually have it for us. Wait for the water to go down. Oh, good call. That's a big time saver. Excellent suggestion there. Okay, pixel perfect. Okay, yeah, you gotta be right hanging halfway off the edge there. Oh, uh, can we do anything about this? Oh, we can just blast them out. No, we can't. Yes, we can. Here, do your thing, little bird man. Oh, and then he clears the... That's cute. I forgot that he clears the blocks with his uh, Shine Spark. Okay. That's a cool little puzzle. I actually... Other than the bullshit loop around to redo it unless you freeze the fish. That was a cool little puzzle. Interesting and creative use of, like, a background NPC from the original Super Metroid. Definitely want to save here. We're going into Crade. Oh boy. The very rare recharge chamber, which makes me think we've got a doozy of a fight in for us. So I've speculated two things they could do with the Crade fight here. Number one, uh,. No platforms for Kraid, because we can basically jump as high as his mouth. Although the other nastier thing that I thought of to shake up the Kraid fight would be... was, uh, underwater Kraid. Which I jokingly suggested, uh, during the bullshit in the wrecked ship. So we'll see which of those predictions ends up coming true. Okay, we're not underwater. We're off to a good start here. He's brown. Oh no, we got the platforms too. It's actually kind of the opposite of a standard crate fight. We have a low ceiling. Okay. This is actually basically just a standard crate fight, isn't it? Maybe he has more health or something. Why don't I use super missiles? That's... yeah, that, that turned him pretty red. Damn it. Oh, he's gotta be in his claws there. Jerk. Oh, he caught my super that time. And I'm almost out of missiles. Okay, I guess we're down to charge shots. Or unless I kill his little claw dealies. I guess the gimmick here is just that he has more health than usual. So I'm, am I even supposed to have Varia for this fight? I guess I didn't need... Oh no, I did need it. I needed Varia to get Freeze Shot, which I needed to get Super Missiles which I needed to get in here. It's kind of weird. So far, Fantoon is the only boss fight I've seen that's been modified in any way. All the others just changed up the arenas a little bit, and several of them didn't even do that. Oh, he's super red now.
Okay, I'm doing this backwards. Get him to open up with the regular shot, then... Pff, that claw hand's going crazy there. Okay, we need high charge shots. This is the first time in ages I've done a real Kraid fight and didn't just... You know, smack his ass down with three super missiles or whatever it takes. I think it's three supers. There we go. Yeah, that was kind of my fault. Uh, spending my super missiles frivolously there. Okay, so we got Varia. What's he gonna give us? I'm guessing... Probably not power bombs. Those tend to be lying out in the open. I'm guessing speed booster. And then that'll get us power bombs. Is that space jump? Uh, well, that's an interesting change to the regular Super Metroid power progression. Uh, so, that, yeah, this is going to open things up quite a bit. Oh, and the respin... Okay, <laughs> this is so much easier than Super Metroid Space Jump. It's almost too easy, but I guess that one, well, that's what makes it fun. Nice. And then, yeah, just as I predicted, uh, this is going to take us back down to the save point. Cool. I actually complete, completely forget what this gets us. Like, I've pointed out in a couple places, oh, this would be a good place for space jump, but I can't remember where those places were. They weren't anywhere here, because we've cleared out this area. Oh, also, now that we've beaten the boss, we can probably go clear that gray door from earlier. Wait. What the hell is this? Oh, this is just... Yeah, we haven't been able to get to the lower part of this room. Or did they change the layout of this room? What the hell? Were there always spikes down here? I feel like... No, there weren't. Or... No, this is a new room. We haven't cleared out these panels before. Or haven't... Yeah, we haven't filled in these tiles until now. This actually looks a little bit suspicious. Nope. Okay, so that's kind of freaky. They're going around changing rooms on us. Anyways, like I said, uh, we can go grab... Go check in on that gray door now. Wait, what's that shit up there? That one stray... Oh, did they take out, like, the floor and the ceiling of this room? Is that what's going on here? Oh yeah, there's like a new section of this room up above now. Not that I think maps... Oh, there's the shit. Okay, yeah, just... Actually, Saturn Meteor was right about that. Super missiles give you 10... 10 missile capacity instead of the standard 5. So that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of how... Yeah, how Saturn Meteor, Meteor figured, too. It's like, oh, super missiles cost 10, so then maybe a super missile pack will be worth 10 missiles. Yes, that's right. That's an, actually another change I really like about this hack. Is, yeah, it's one shared missile capacity, but supers cost 10. And, yeah, the effect of that is that every missile capacity upgrade actually matters now. Because it actually affects your supers as well as your regular missiles. So yeah, it's a, it's a really good change, I think. 
Like, I think that alone just single-handedly fixes the classic Super Metroid problem of... Uh, like, half of the secrets in the game are just missile packs that nobody gives a shit about. And it's like, oh, your missiles are now also super missiles. See if you give a shit now, and I totally do. Oh yeah, sure enough, now that we, now that we got Kraid, the door is open. Uh, so this is probably going to get us another Turian switch as well. Also, I noticed that in... in Turian... Oh wait, what am I doing? Freezing turtles like a chump. That's right, only chumps freeze turtles at this stage in the game. Um, nine gates remain. But yeah, I noticed that the gates were kind of grouped... Separated into, into groups of three, I think it was? Maybe four? I'm guessing that that indicates the section of the game that the switches are located in. Although, not that it really matters, because we can see the switches on the map anyways. So yeah, we're missing one on the far left of Brinstar. I think now's a good time to head back to Samus's ship, because I'm half dead and half out of missiles. And also, it looks like there's just nothing else here for us in Brinstar. Ooh, I wonder if Space Jump works underwater. That would be a god-awful excuse to send us to Meridia without Space Jump, or uh, without a uh, Gravity Suit. This is like, oh, you don't need Gravity Suit to maneuver through water. You can just Space Jump everywhere. It's like, yeah, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Normal gravity restrictions apply underwater. I mean, that's true, but with space jump, I can still jump infinitely, right? That would be enough to overcome. Unless your space jump is too anemic to get any verticality. Similar to the way that you can't really uh, wall jump underwater in the original game. You just don't get enough uh, kick off the wall to gain any height. Oh, I, I did not know that about Space Jump and uh, water. I guess in standard Metroid, you would know, or I guess if you sequence break or whatever, you could get Space Jump without gravity suit, but I've, I've never done it. I did not know that about, uh, yeah, being underwater, disabling Space Jump. That's weird. Why would they do that? Why would they prevent you from space jumping underwater? Is it specifically to, pre to prevent you from doing stuff in Meridia if you sequence break and get the... No, space jump is in Meridia, so... I don't get it. That's fucking weird. <laughs> oh, hey. Yeah, that's kind of obvious. Boo. Okay. Speedball confirmed, I would say, at this point. I don't know how else we get through those blocks, unless we can go through from, from underneath. Might as well take the save again now that I've hit the switch. We're getting up there on switches. I think we've hit... We've gone from, what, four to, like, seven of them now? Oh, hey, we can do stuff over there, and we can do stuff in the wrecked ship, I'm pretty sure, as well. Or maybe not, no, water was our problem. 
in the wrecked ship, but we can get this over here at least. I'm guessing missile pack. Or nothing, maybe. It's nothing. Yeah, I think it's 15 total, so, uh... Yeah, 7 down would be 8 left, because that's how math works. Oh, I can get that guy over there, which is also probably just missiles, but... You know, I'm kind of running out of things to do. Also, maybe there is something in the wrecked ship. It's not hard to get in anymore, so I might as well go for it. That looks funky, the way it slows down your animation. What do we got? Oh, it looks like we could get up there, too. Although I'm gonna have to do... the grapple beam bullshit in that one stupid room. Or will I? Maybe I can break the surface of the water. And clear it that way. Also, I didn't even have super missiles the first time I came through here. Yeah, we should clear this place out thoroughly. Also, the the way that it kind of reverses the logic of the original wrecked ship, where it powers it down after you kill Fantoon, instead of uh, powering it on, is a cute touch, but I kind of despise the way that it takes away your save point forever once you do that. Or I say forever, unless there's some way to turn the power back on. Actually, there, there must be, otherwise there's no way to move the robot. Oh boy. Nope, we're fine. Oh, this is all underwater. If this is all underwater, then there's nothing we can do here. I don't know if this has changed for this hack, but I like how you can actually move, as much as I bitch about underwater movement, you can actually move through the water fairly speedily just by jumping your way. I don't know if that's actually in the original, the way it works in the original game or not, because you have almost no reason to ever go underwater in Super Metroid without gravity suit. Okay. Uh, so that didn't help us at all. I'm actually... It's way faster to just reset and go back to the last save point. So maybe we do that? Actually, no, we're pretty close to the entrance. This isn't going to be that painful. We didn't have to redo the one bullshit room I was afraid of, so... This is no problem. So I guess we're back to Norfair. Which is kind of its own problem right there. Oh, that's right, yeah, there was a little secret exit here. So... Well, glad we got that out of the way. I'm actually super happy that we didn't have to mess around in the wrecked ship any... anymore. So what are we missing at this point? We got Fantoon, we got Kraid. I guess that's, you know, the other two bosses. Dragon and Ridley. Then we're missing speed booster, power bombs. 
the presumed booster ball, although that might be wrapped into speed booster. Beams, we haven't seen a new beam in a while. Oh yeah, Botwoon, and then Golden Torizo, who we've seen but can't beat yet. Let's just count the slots. Yeah, so we're missing Plasma, Spazer, Gravity Suit, Power Bomb. Or is that Power Bomb? Or Spring Ball is what that would normally be. Are there three ball upgrades? Screw Attack is the other one. What else goes in ball upgrades? Morphing Ball, Bomb, uh, Spring Ball. Did they add a slot for Booster Ball here, or does Power Bomb go there? Because Super Missile and Missile don't go there. Does Screw go in Ball, or does it go in Boots? Because there's a slot in Boots as well. Oh yeah, Speed Boots, Speed Boots. Okay, so that would be everything. So in that case, there would be no new power-ups in this game. Huh. Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, that's gonna do it for me tonight. Uh, tomorrow I've got supper with my family, so the next stream will be... not tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we'll see if we can get one in uh, Monday or Tuesday. If not, then I'll definitely see you Wednesday. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching and hanging out and giving me the helpful pro tips to help me through this game. And uh, yeah, have a good night and we'll see you next time.